a couple of years ago, in fact, quite a few years ago in 2017, I came up with this little kind of uh, memory device for me, and that was A, B, C, Ds. And that was for me to take into a shop or wherever I would be and think about the whiskey that was in my hand that I was thinking about buying. A for age statement, B for bottling strength, C for chill filtration, and D for dye to see if there'd been color added. And the idea with, with that was to give me an idea immediately of who is this whiskey targeted towards. So if, if, if there was an age statement on there, fantastic. If the bottles, bottling strength was 46 or above, even better. That's a the good chance that it would be linked with the C, the chill filtration thing. And D, I had to state on the label that it was natural colour. Tonight, we're not so much bothered with, this is 2022 now, age statement is far, far less of an issue than it was five years ago when I came up that, with that thing. We might touch on that, but that's not the focus tonight. Tonight, the focus is about B for bottling strength because it's directly linked with that chill filtration thing, C, and very much focusing on D for colouring. I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to another Thursday night. Welcome to the V-Pub. Hope you're all doing very well. Um, yes, uh, that little ABCD thing, it's still something to keep in mind. It's still something that I keep in mind myself. It's still something to consider. However, I think that because of vintages, because we know the age of uh, younger, newer distilleries, because of lots and lots of things, and the cask quality, the whiskey quality, um, the quality of the knowledge out there in the community as well, the age statement thing, there's been a clear divide there. So even non-age statement product that's pointed at us tends to be really, really good. And oftentimes we can kind of relax a wee bit about the age statement. Not all the times though. But tonight we're talking about natural whiskey. We're talking about the issue of chill filtration, that horrible process. And I say horrible, that tonight's not going to be about just saying this is terrible, it shouldn't happen. Um, you know, we're actually wanting to discuss this and ask why it is happening. Why does it exist? And what does it actually mean to us? How much can we actually tell? How much, how much does it affect our whiskey experiences? But chill filtration is a, is a pretty aggressive thing where they, they really chill the liquid down, sometimes too close to or below freezing, and then force it through a very fine mesh filter to remove all uh, the fats and oils and to prevent it from clouding. So it's a cosmetic thing to keep it clear when the whiskey is cool. Colouring is just as bad. In fact, colouring has become the real bee in my bonnet recently. Is you know, we're in a time where we know so much more about wood. The wood quality, we're told, is getting better and better all the time. So we shouldn't really be relying on colouring as much. For mass market products, maybe there's an argument for normalisation, for harmonisation, for consistency, and all of these reasons that's put forward by the people who use the practice. Okay. We understand that, but really? Okay, let's, but the whiskies that we enjoy as enthusiasts, that's fascinating. Why would you put color in that when we're excited about one batch to the next? It's all about flavor. We rarely talk about it being paler, but we do have to admit that even as enthusiasts, we still hold up something that's really dark and go, oh, look at the color. So all of that's on discussion tonight, uh, up, up for discussion tonight, sorry, all of that's on the table. I've got six drams in front of me, I need to be very careful, I've actually got seven because I've got a wee calibrator here, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, and we're going to go through these and we're going to just taste them. I'm going to try and do this blind as much as I can, I know what's in these glasses, I just don't know what order they're in. But I've got three guests coming on tonight and they're going to help me and, and talk through this. They're going to give their opinions on their experience and we're going to discuss the whiskies. But there's nothing scientific. We can't achieve anything conclusive tonight, of course. And it's interesting. I'll come to that in a wee minute. In the meantime, I'm going to jump into the lounge and welcome some of you beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. 
So great to see so many of you and fantastic. I love hanging out with you all on a Thursday night. It's wonderful to have you here. I've had a dram bought immediately from me right at the off. Thanks so much. My friend Bill Monteith, good to see you in, Bill. Uh, cheers, Ryan, friends. Uh, here's, I hate to keep missing these live, but just pop in to wish you all the best. Bill, don't worry about it, my friend. I just appreciate that you're able to pick it up on the replay and it's just as valuable to me. Um, I know that you like to be here live, you, you like to chat to the other uh, barflies and all our friends here in the community, but buddy, you do what you can, life. It's all about um, timing, mood and moment. Good to see you, Bill. Thank you very much for your drama, friend. Cheers to you, Bill. Who have we got tonight? Let's pick up some orange. If you type Aquavite, it lights up for me. Orange, and I can see you're trying to get my attention. Alistair Gray's in. Good to see Alistair Donner pass whiskey. Fantastic. Tim, Mike Molasses, Hell's Wood. Helen and Andy actually have a wee set of samples. I sent them down an extra set so that they could sip along in the background tonight. Helen, at some point, I'll reach out to you, and hopefully maybe you could just hey, WhatsApp what your favourite is colour-wise to the least favourite. Um, I've just kind of done Helen and Andy, so if you guys have got a, a, a two different, um, if you, a different a set of preferences, you can let me know that too. Yeah, I know I didn't send a lot down, though, only kind of 30, 35 CLs, right? Or, uh, uh, yeah, no, 35 MLs. Um, hopefully there's enough for you to be getting on with, Helen. Good to see you. And Falsgraf is here, Luna Aaron, fantastic Pete Head, Jerry Miller, Graham Fraser, um, a, oops, Whiskey with Molly, Ben, Bud Jenkins, a Jimmy Jazz, fantastic Jimmy. So good to see so many people from all over the place here tonight, all over Europe and even out in the States there, Jimmy Jazz uh, in New England. Ebhead Rolf. Uh, I like the icon, Rolf. My heart's with you, my friend. Good to see you, and Good to have you here. Uh, Drew from Arizona is here too. Island Hopper Stewart, good to see you guys too. Whiskey Throttle Daniel in Canada. Scott Allen, uh, I hope you're doing well. Hope Becky's doing well, Scott. Good to see you. Fleur Bex Ray is back again. Good to see you, Fleur. I hope you're doing well, my friend. James Morgan. Bruno Martins. Um, uh, Bruno Martins uh, over in Portugal, of course. Graham Fraser, uh, I, I already mentioned you. Uh, just trying to get my attention there. Just as it jumps, Graham. Hope it wasn't important. Whiskey Vault uh, is in. James DeGulio, uh, McAllen Fine and Rare Doc. I got to hang out with Doc uh, last night. It was wonderful to hook up with Doc again. And he's taught, he's saying we all learned our A, B, C, D. Uh, Bruno's saying good evening. Derbasti. Derbasti, that looks like a good, uh, sorry, a, a new name. And he's saying good evening to you all. Welcome. You're very welcome, my friend. Jed Smith is here. Good to see you, Jed. I heard you were suffering a wee bit. Uh, I hope you're not feeling too bad, my friend. I hope you're keeping well. Daniel Vermas, fantastic. Daniel, always good to welcome you in, buddy. I hope you're keeping very, very well. Max Kreitner in Austria. Uh, just so, so many of you. Wonderful stuff. Robert Robert Fredrickson. Let's try and catch another few names. Uh, Ruel Orange Wool. Scott Pascoe. Time for a dram, Gregor. E is for E. No, maybe something will come up, Gregor. Um, Scotty Secker is in. Good to see you, Scotty. Alan Gray, eh, Mock Brother Ray, Mark Rayner. Mark, good to see you, buddy. I hope you're doing very, very well. Eh, uh, Leanne Rayner, um, uh, Scotch on the Bayou over on YouTube, has just started to put out live streams. Um, I think her favourite night is uh, a Tuesday, um, obviously on Central US time. Uh, but she's talking about doing an occasional Sunday too, and she's trying to sync up with me so it doesn't clash with the lock-ins for patrons. Um, but that's absolutely fine. There's an inevitability that we will have clashes from time to time. But it's just another wee, um, uh, another wee uh, example of how the community is really kind of connected and really kind of considerate of each other. They're like, oh, I'd love to go out on a Sunday and do a thing. Oh, wait a minute. Better check that there's not a lock-in going out from uh, Roy. Uh, it's wonderful. Anyway, I caught uh, her stream this week. And it was talking about the whiskey journey with Mark Goins and Zach Andrews. And it was just a fantastic, warm, fuzzy kind of, they said some nice things about me. I was very grateful for it. But just a lovely, warm, fuzzy kind of, uh, not just talking about whiskey journeys, interestingly. What they actually ended, talk, ended up talking about was not all the wonderful whiskeys they'd had along the way. But they were connecting the whiskeys to people. That was what made it so warm and fuzzy. I stayed up far too late listening to that last night, Leanne. Um, but thank you. And it's nice to see you in, Mark. Scotch on the Bayou on YouTube. Jimmy Legg is here. Of course you are, Jimmy. Good to see you. Captain Bamis is... Okay. Short A sound. Bamis doesn't rhyme with famous. Okay. Uh, okay. It's Bamis then. Captain Bamis? Let's go with that. Let's go with the captain. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, captain. 
Uh, fantastic. Robert Rutherford, good evening from Tenerife. Good evening, Robert. I'm not sure. I think that's a new name. Very nice to see you. And Fernando's saying good evening, Roy. Good evening, everyone. Glad I could catch the VPUB. Cheers to all from Paraguay. It's just amazing, isn't it amazing? Fantastic. Paraguay. I think you speak Spanish in Paraguay, don't you, Fernando? Uh, bienvenido, if you do. Donner Pass Whiskey saying, hey, I wonder how much uh, chill, filter, chill fil filtering is still being done out of habit. We spent all this money on this equipment, so are we going to use it? It tends to exist at the bottling halls, but you're absolutely right. Some of it is just legacy. Some of it is just habit. That's what we do. Um, and especially when the machine becomes bigger than any single uh, person's uh, idea or direction, you know, it's just going to kind of continue moving in that direction. Um, it's kind of, it's going to be interesting just to kind of talk about all of that. I've always had a belief that whiskey, you know, it's rare for there needing to be anything or, or that, for there to be a need to hide anything. Say the words. You've often heard me say that. And the idea is, is that we're not stupid, especially nowadays. You know, we're very, very invested, especially if you look at uh, from the uh, through the context of whiskey. So when something exists for a reason, you don't need to wash over it. You don't need to kind of give it the, um, you know, the, uh, the marketing paint or whatever it may be. You know, just tell us why these things are. Because often it's understandable. It's for a business reason. It's for a, a branding reason. It's for a, a cost uh, reason. There's lots and lots of reasons for things to exist. But when it's kind of, there's a veil put over it or uh, disinformation, misinformation spread around. That's what breeds the contempt and that's what gives us a point of contrast to argue over. So we need to kind of just talk it out and say these things exist for these reasons and it might not be for us, but that's okay because there's lots of other things that are for us and continually that's becoming more and more the case every year. There's more whiskies becoming naturally presented. If you go back to the early 90s or late 80s, you, you had to be in the realms of an independent bottler if you wanted the naturally presented product most of the time. Even then, it wasn't guaranteed to be the case. Indep independents like Gordon McPhail did practice chill filtration, low ABV. I'm not sure they ever colored anything, but that was very, very uh, common. So that's just following in the legacy of blends. It's not the case these days. We're much more informed. And 46% is not too hot for our delicate little palates. We're in love with cast strength whiskies. We're in love with that idea that we can get as close to that natural product that's in that cask, in that warehouse as possible. Most of us can never be in that warehouse. We can never draw from that cask. But it's nice to get as close as possible. And a 40% coloured, filtered product on a mass market shelf somewhere is as far away from that as you can be and still legally call it whiskey. So how does that affect our experiences? How does that genuinely affect us? Does it mean that we can't drink it? Does it mean that it's bad? Does it mean that it's poor quality or not worth the money? Actually, in most cases, no. In some cases, yes. There are cynical practices. Falscraft has seen colouring, I understand, for branding reasons, but I still don't like it. Filtration is only uh, for 40 percenters, and these are only uh, for... Well, they're not just for beginners, but they're also, Falscraft, for people who, they're not whiskey geeks like us. They don't want to sit and, you know, really kind of dive into every single sip, every single glass. They just want to relax with a social drink. And a lot of these things don't really matter to them. And yes, you might be able to give them something that's a bit more impactful, a lot more engagement, and change their mind and make them see. But oftentimes, they're, they're going to be ambivalent. There are lots and lots of people out there, the majority, that are just ambivalent. They don't really mind. They're happy to go back and buy the same brand, bottle after bottle, or buy whatever's on offer in the supermarket, whatever the cheapest malt is that week, that month, whenever. And they're quite happy and content. And for us to turn up in their presence and tell them that their experience, their thing that they're enjoying is somehow invalid because it's handled badly, it's not natural. Who's in the wrong there? It's us. 
we need to always kind of contextualize the fact that we are enthusiasts and we demand a wee bit more and it's different for everyone. Jim Whiskey Novice from Ireland and I've just finished recording a review for an 18 year old bottled at 43% chill filtered and color added. It was lovely. I want great presentation to Roy, but it isn't everything in my opinion. Uh, Jim, that's fantastic. That's absolutely true. So the whiskey I'm opening up with tonight, um, it's not what you reviewed, Jim, and I can tell you why in a second, but it is an 18 year old Jim and at 43%. It's a Highland Park 18-year-old. I bought this last year for a V-Pub. I don't even remember which V-Pub I bought this for now. Could have been the year before. But it was, there's not much out of it. It's been kind of pushed to the back of the cabinet. Anyway, I've opened it tonight again. and I'm enjoying this pour. Really enjoying it. Really enjoying it, honestly. Would I give it, you know, top marks or anything? No, I think it's 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 slightly better than average. Highland Park 18 was something that used to be very, very dear to me. I loved it a lot. It was an easy present for people to buy for me because it was pricey, £65 back in the day. And I used to get it for birthdays and Father's Day and Christmas, that kind of thing. Highland Park 18 was my kind of treat whiskey. But that was way back before I really cared about a lot of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. Highland Park 18, we know it's natural colour. Nothing from Highland Park these days is coloured. Everything is natural. It's 18 years, so the age statement is there. But then at 43% ABV, not only is it below that preferred opening bid, let's say, of 46 for an enthusiast, that means that in order for it to be stable through shipment and sit on a cold shelf, whatever it may be, and for it to be clear over ice or an poured cold, it needs to be chill filtered because at 43%, those oils will cloud it'll give us an effect called Scotch mist. And a lot of people see that as a defect. They don't like opaque, cloudy whiskey. Now we can say that they're not in the know. We can tell them that they're, that they're, they're not knowledgeable, but that's silly, isn't it? Because that's people and we don't need to know the ins and outs of everything that we eat and drink, especially when we're just casually enjoying the product. Pierre is saying, um, already addressed the E for environment was your contribution. Oh, that's a peach, Frank. I don't know, was it Whiskey 101, Nick? Um, I think that's a cracker um, because it's becoming an issue more and more. And interestingly, it's inextricably linked with gel filtration, the environment. Can you imagine how much energy is involved in taking huge vats of liquid and chilling it down to freezing? just to polish it, just to clear out the fats and the oils. It adds cost, it adds energy, and it doesn't always need to be done. And it'd be interesting what the cost balance is between giving us the few percent, two or three percent extra ABV to get it up to that point where they don't need to chill filter it versus not. And then in the modern days, in 2022, they could put, this is a natural product. This is unchill filtered. If this clouds over ice, that's your reassurance that you're sipping quality that's had nothing stripped away from it. Drew from Arizona saying, I don't mind a cloud, uh, but if it develops a skin on the top after a few minutes, I draw the line. Uh, Drew, Drew, if you're sipping whiskeys that develop a scum or a film or on the top, it's either bad whiskey or a dirty glass, my friend. But I know that you're just kidding. Falsgraf is saying there's a rhyme in German saying, say only what's true, drink only what's clear. Ooh, this kind of thing cements prejudice against Scotch mist. Um, yeah, and I can understand. It, it's probably a very old saying back in the days that, you know, it was pure, it was distilled, you know, it was something that was just completely off a still or something. Um, I get it. I get what they're talking about. There, There is still that issue with anything that that is considered uh, not pure or adulterated in some way. So it's ironic that a cloudy whiskey is actually pure. One of my guests has dropped out because he had a problem with battery and battery charging, and he's not back in yet. Uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how he's getting on. I want to start um, the topic tonight uh, just by talking about a tour I was recently on. It wasn't a bad tour. I'm not going to talk about the place. I'm not going to talk about uh, any of the, it's not, because it's, 
I can use this story, this anecdote as a kind of almost industry-wide thing. But I went on this tour. The tour guide, unfortunately, um, didn't ask anything about us or, or our experience, or are we beginners, what are we interested, how to pitch his tour, um, because all of us were fresh from the Glasgow Whiskey Festival, so he was speaking to six whiskey geeks. Um, but the tour was very kind of, um, I guess they get into rhythm and things like that, and, and you know, there's certain uh, jokes, puns, anecdotes and things that they share along the way, but a lot of it, we've heard it so many times before, um, it's fine for a kind of busload of tourists, and I don't mean to be judgmental or dismissive, or uh, there's no snobby intended here, this is just feedback. If you've got a group of six whiskey geese, geeks, they're probably looking for a different experience and you kind of don't need to roll out all the tropes and things. You know, we can learn something from everybody all the time, absolutely, but there's a different way to pitch these things anyway, gripe over. We get talking, we get talking, we get to the tasting at the end, there's lovely whiskies in front of us, but there's also some pretty low-end entry-level stuff, and we get into the inevitable territory, and I can't bite my lip any longer, and I just gently ask about the policy regarding chill filtration, regarding colour, and it's not the first time I've heard this, and it's disappointing when I do hear it, and it goes something like this. We've given natural whiskey, no colour, no chill filtration to whiskey, so-called experts. And we've also given them a glass of something that is coloured and is chill filtered, and they can't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. And we hear that all the time, don't we? We hear that from the industry regularly. It's not the first time anybody in here has heard that, I'm sure. You can't tell the difference. He's right. He's absolutely right. Now... I don't know what two whiskies he's offered or anybody that he's witnessed offering. I don't know what they are. A very good example of a filtered whiskey and a very poor example of a natural whiskey, perhaps, if you want to be cynical about it. But that's not what we're talking about, is it? What we're talking about is I've sipped hundreds and thousands of whiskey. My experience is not two glasses to compare and contrast next to each other. My takeaway from all the whiskey that I've enjoyed, the whiskey that's really re reached in and grabbed me, the whiskey that I can't not think about, tends to be natural whiskey. Now, in the start of my journey, it was much easier for something that was lower ABV, that was chill filtered, maybe had some colour in it, to affect me in that way. But as I went along on my journey, I realised that the real engagement, the real experience, was in things that were presented naturally. And that wasn't because I had a bias towards that product. I had a bias towards things that I loved the flavour of. So it's absolutely true that we will achieve nothing with our blind samples tonight. There's nothing going to be conclusive. There's nothing scientific about this blind tasting tonight. We're not going to potentially taste, even match up the pairs. I have three distilleries, two of each, six drams. So we might not even be able to match up the pairs tonight, let alone tell which one is coloured and which one isn't, which one is filtered and which one isn't. It's just for discussion. But over the course of our whiskey journeys, over those hundreds of drams that we've enjoyed as whiskey enthusiasts, whiskey fans, whiskey, whatever it may be, we all come to the realisation that the best whiskey tends to be presented naturally. I'm not talking about it does not have to be cast strength. But the best whiskey tends to be whiskey that doesn't have anything taken away and doesn't have anything added to it. Graham Fraser is saying, I think that a good distillery tour guide should pick up on the guest knowledge from their questions. That's right, but if he starts out in that way, you don't want to be the guy that's like, oh yeah, well I know all of that stuff. I think that the, the opening thing should be a welcome from him and kind of just getting to know him or her or whoever, getting to know the people. I appreciate that sometimes it's a huge group and he can't do that. But when it's just six people who've kind of been sitting around, standing around and chatting about whiskey for a long time. And also they need to be armed with more kind of layers of how to pitch these things. Because I'm offended if I, if somebody tells me these so-called whiskey experts, now I don't know any experts in whiskey, truthfully. I don't, where, where are the experts? Because <laughs> hey, everybody that I know in whiskey can learn something from everybody else. And they might know their own kind of thing inside out and there are other people that have a much more broader knowledge but not particularly deep so I don't like this kind of experts you know this anyway 
then suddenly you're kind of shut down. But you can't, I can't go back from that. I can't say you can't, no, they can't tell the difference. Because if I say I can, <laughs> it, it, you have to contextualize it in things. So you realize that, okay, it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. But I think it's a shame in the industry today in 2022 that there's still that kind of, that kind of thing going on. Why not just say that, yeah, for a mass market product, we color it because people do not want to see a change in color from one bottle to the next. It's about our brand. We have to ensure that there's consistency in color there. And the only way we can do that, blend by, if somebody's blending for flavor, the only way we can do it aesthetically is to artificially harmonize, normalize, whatever the term is, the color. Chill filtration is an easy thing to discuss. If you don't chill filter a whiskey, you pour it over ice, or if it's cold, it clouds. Scotch mist happens. People see that as a defect and they push it away. But for our premium product, for, you know, 14, 8, 15, 16, 18 year old and above, we do not chill filter. We don't want to take out all those valuable oils. That's an easy discussion to have. And then have people make a judgment based on sipping two glasses from your range. You don't need to say we do it because nobody can tell the difference because it's utter nonsense. That's not the reason that it's done. So to say it is that, and to hear those words is disappointing. Connor Smith, good to see you, Connor. He's saying, uh, I have found some whiskies that have a processed feel. I can't pin what it is, but also can't shake the feeling when I sip them. We're going to inevitably touch on that tonight. Um, that that engineered, that contrived feel you're talking about, Connor, is a re very, very real thing. Uh, if I don't pick it out tonight, I'll be surprised. But let's see how we get on. There's one of them in the lineup for me tonight that is very like that. Maybe not arrival and first sip, interestingly, because you're, I'm saturating and confusing my palate as I sit backwards and forwards. But for me, the mid palate development and certainly the finish, it gives it away. So it's going to be interesting to see how our guests go on with these. Uh, I'll have a quick chat with you guys. Scotch mist happens. <laughs> I want a t-shirt that says Scotch mist happens. Good idea, Jimmy. Graham Fraser is saying, how do you approach distillery tour guides who make basic mistakes as sometimes happens? It's very awkward. It's difficult uh, because especially when you're in the company of strangers, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that mouth, right? Um, so it's, it's difficult and, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't, I tend to just stay quiet. And, and when I can't stay quiet, it's never, I never come away from it feeling good. I, but at the same time, I don't want a lot of the tropes and nonsense, misinformation, disinformation, whatever it is to, to endure. So sometimes it's probably better to speak up, even if you do look like the idiot. Luna Aaron's saying, some tour guides are just thrown into the thing without any preparation. Oh no, Luna, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not the people. It's not the people taking you on the tour guide. It's not the tour guide. It's the idea that you're putting somebody to convert everybody that steps into your distillery, convert everybody into a potential ambassador, and you pay them poorly and you train them worse. Scotch whiskey is in rude health. The last couple of years notwithstanding, we have the ability to pay tour guides and to train them better than what we do and turn everybody that steps into any distillery into a, um, a potential ambassador going forward. It doesn't mean to say they only buy whiskey and drink whiskey from that distillery forever and a day, no. But for many, that's often the case. They might only visit one distillery. It's down to the companies to take these people and to let them know the nuance of all of this. I agree with you, Lena. My brother is saying, if a producer worries about colour, just use a coloured bottle. Ironically, some of the ones that do still employ colour are still inside a coloured bottle. But I agree with you. JG is saying, eh, knowing that colour has been added eh, to me makes the experience feel a little bit phony. Same with chill filtered. For a lot of people, they feel like that, JG. They feel robbed because one of the things that we love to do is hold a glass up and marvel at the colour of it, right? And then we discover that it's artificially contrived it's a concocted color in some cases and we feel robbed of that experience um okay there are products out there that we don't really we just want to drink and enjoy and relax with others have cost us a lot of money and we really want to savor and color is part of it whiskey with molly saying unfortunately witnessed that guy on the glen scotia masterclass 
at a fight, Fife Whiskey Festival. Just disagreed with everything Gary said. Really obnoxious. Yeah. Unfortunately, the enthusiasts can be a wee bit like that, right? It's a difficult thing to do to step in to somebody's shoes and see it from their perspective, but it's the only way we're ever going to fathom understanding. And I'm not just talking about whiskey there. Energy prices are going through the roof, says Nick. Whiskey 101, the pressure on distilleries costs must be high. Losing chill filtering and D150 might just get further up the list of ideas because cost is king. I'm a romantic too. I'm whimsical too, Nick. I like that. Uh, in molasses, Mikey saying, I really know much more than the, the whiskey tour guides, but in similar situations, I try to formulate my difference of opinion as a question, less confrontational and can spark conversation. That's a talent and a skill, uh, Mike, absolutely. Uh, I'm getting better at it, uh, but it's uh, if you can pull that off, uh, good for you because you're absolutely spot on. That's the way to do it. Sandramonious has just joined the Aquavitae Barflies. Uh, thank you, Sandramonious. Uh, anybody that joins the Barflies, um, keeps the VPubs ad-free. Um, the channel is funded by Patreon. Thank you so much, patrons. I love you all. Um, uh, and I do do a write-up every week for patrons, and I do a monthly lock-in for patrons too. Um, that's where, that's how I can endure, that's how I can survive, is through Patreon. But Barflies in here keep all the VPubs. I don't get any monetization from YouTube. You keep uh, the VPubs ad-free. Thank you so much, Sandra Morris, and welcome. Okay, let's go on and get my guests in now. Uh, let's welcome uh, the first guy that I reached out to. In fact, the reason that this has been reshuffled a couple of weeks is because he was feeling a wee bit poorly, but I think he's getting close uh, to back on track. Uh, so we're talking about a uh, whiskey geek, Ben. Good to see you, Ben. I hope you're doing very well, my friend. Are you feeling a wee bit better? I am, yeah. Slow, slowly getting there. Slowly, slowly getting, getting there. there. Okay. <clears throat> Buddy, don't worry tonight if your palate's a wee bit off. You're just here to help the discussion because I know you've got a informed opinion and a lot of experience on it as well, but it's good to see you, my friend. Let's I've reach in and, and, uh, and grab a hold of Jenny. You've met Jenny before, Jenny Carlson. Good to see you, Jenny. How are you keeping? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. I'm doing very well. It's nice to see you and hear you loud and clear too. Excellent. Now, everybody has uh, probably remembers Jenny from the last time. We kept her on for over three hours the last time. <laughs> we trying to keep it a wee bit neater tonight. Uh, but Jenny does work in the industry and has worked in the industry for a number of years. Currently, your position is, uh, how would you title yourself, communications? Yeah, I mean, my title is marketing communications for Arden American Distillery, but I do a bit of everything, so you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Fantastic. It's always nice to welcome you back, Jenny. Thanks for stepping up and joining us tonight. And Thank also, you. my friend uh, from down south, another friend from down south, uh, we've got Andy from Maltbox. Always a good sport, always up for a bit of fun, always <laughs> up for a challenge, and just uh, uh, like everybody here tonight, full of humility and, uh, yeah, I guess a bit of pragmatism that we know that there's no, there's no pressure on us to try and fathom what's coloured, what's not coloured. We know we're not going to get it right, are we, Andy? Uh, well, I'm certainly not. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, yeah, just there for the ride. It should, it should be good fun. So let me just shoot that at you because I talked to, before we went live tonight, I mentioned to you that I know I've been watching you for years, Andy, um, except for that hiatus that I'll never let forgive you for, but I'm glad to see you back again. <laughs> um, I've been watching you for a long time and you've always had a wee bit of pragmatism. You've always said, look, maybe this is coloured, we don't know, or you've always said this is chill filtered and things. You weave it into the discussion, mm -hmm. but you don't demand it, right? What's, what's your take on it? Yeah, I think, you know, probably the word I'd use is is kind of adaptability. If, you know, it's a bit like pigeon pigeonholing yourself into one distillery and, you know, one brand, one approach to, to life generally. I think, you know, you need to be a bit, bit more open-minded about some things. And, you know, having been around the whiskey community for like, 12 or so years minus the two years break obviously i do apologize roy um i'm, I'm never gonna live that down um yeah. you know we, we, we're very quick i think sometimes as whiskey geeks enthusiasts whatever you want to say to say fly the flag of drink whiskey how you want it but at the same time make sure it's non-chill filtered natural color yeah yeah, yeah and it's yeah. like well kind of not the same thing yeah um so yeah no i think you know there's a lot of whiskey you out there. You can't talk about uh, being inclusive and, and yeah. open-minded and then immediately discount things, right? Absolutely. Exactly. That's it. But, Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think it's important to understand why they exist. Jenny, I know that you're currently in a, in a you're working for a company now that is not really in question at all. The idea of filtering or colouring 
the product that, you, that you're making there is is I don't think it's ever going to be on the table, right? Oh, no, I don't mean to laugh. I mean no, no, we're yeah. not considering that at all. Please don't start that rumor. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to kind of reflect too much on what your role is or kind of. Uh, that's not why you're here. You're here because, well, you're here honestly because I like hanging out with you and drinking with you. <laughs> but I you're mean, here yeah. just to to kind of go through and help us through the whiskies that are in front of us tonight. Um, and I know that your experience, you talk about being in communications and things, mm. but I also know that you have a hand in making whiskey mm. at Ardnamark and you get to have a voice and an opinion on tasting samples and things. Yeah. And, um, um. I'm part of the blending team. Yeah, no, it's it's, yeah. Uh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, uh, I forget to mention that when people ask me what I do. Funny, mm -hmm. like, it's the, it's the one thing I wanted to ever do, and yet I'm just busy with everything else. I forget to say, oh, and by the way, I help make this stuff. I, I, Absolutely. I, I and any, anybody that's tried any of the Ardnamurkins, you seem to either be making. You're just very very fortunate to make everything that you make is wonderful. Or you've been very successful at it, Jenny, because we're, <laughs> we're lapping it up, right? We can't get enough of this stuff. Well, Fantastic, despite its fairly young age. You write on the bottle, sorry, I'm still using the context of Arda Merkin, but you write on the bottle, you do mention that it's natural and yeah. until filtered and things. One more question before I move on to Ben is, do you think that there's a cost implication, especially on larger scale releases, if they do take that step of filtration and adding color, there must be a cost. It's another step in the process at the very least, right? Oh yeah, you mean to introduce it to a- Yes. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were talking about that and funnily enough, sustainability is one of my big things with Art American. Um, yeah. I hadn't even considered the fact the energy that it takes to chill further the whiskey. Um, of course, that's going to have an imp implication, but the cost of installing the machinery, um, the technology behind it. It's not a small machine either. It's uh, its going to be expensive. And um, I don't know. I mean, we're going to be talking about it the whole night, well, this, this evening. But um, yeah. I, I remember, yeah, I just don't see why we, we're not interested in t chill filtering. I've, I've worked for a few companies that haven't chill filtered. And um, it's just another step in process. And we, we're, we're not blessed for space where we are or, or time, to be honest. We, we'll say on social media in a couple of weeks, this whiskey is coming out. We don't have time to yes. add another process step in that, um, especially not a big one like um, chill filtration and adding coloring to it. So even if there was a desire there, which, as you've yeah. already mentioned, there isn't. Absolutely. Good. No. Um, ben. I'm glad that you're healthy. It's good to have you back. Um, and it's kind of good that uh, we post, we pushed it out to tonight because I was able to get Andy and Jenny to join us as well. Yeah. Ben, don't feel that you need to pull out another 10 out of 10 like you did at Christmas or give us some tasting notes on a dram that you can tell because of the purifier on the spirit still that it's an art beggar. It's not why you're here tonight. You and I have had nice chats in the, in the past, haven't we? Where it's we've talked happen. about the fact that we don't need to taste the chill filtration. We just know that it's a cosmetic process and in premium single malts that we're enjoying, why would we have it? You're still reviewing whiskey on the channel. What is your take on it? How do you frame it? Um, <clears throat> it's not the be all and end all for me. Uh, I think it, it ties into those charts we've had where despite it being something we'd rather not see, you can't just uh, rule out whole ranges of whiskies or distilleries because of those those specifics. The yeah. the likes of Lagavulin, which hold um, hold a, a dear place to both of us in our whiskey history and journey, are a good uh, example. That you can still have, particularly peated whiskey, where there's something to kind of smother those those elements that would otherwise adult the whiskey you can still have an amazing whiskey that has been touched in those ways. But again, something that we've discussed in the past, we've, we've both been uh, in the luxurious situation of being able to try, um, you can't quite say side by side, but try a similar whiskey from the source without it having been touched in such a way, messed with in such a way. And it's just next level. And yes. so you can't help, but despite the fact that you love this whiskey, for me, um, it's the Distillers Edition. I think for you, it's the Normal 16. You love that expression, but you go, 
it could have been just those next couple <laughs> of steps better if they hadn't taken those steps to ruin it. And I, I guess um, I used to work with a bit of a tangent, sorry, but I used to work with two Polish guys over in Poland. They they have family farms and home distilling is, is a common thing. And they always used to tell me making whiskey is really easy. Take it slow and don't F it up, which yeah. on on a very basic level is just like, well, OK, that doesn't mean anything. But no, they literally mean you have to actively take steps to ruin it. Yes. If you don't meddle, the whiskey doesn't suffer. And they basically use decent, normally grown on their own farm, decent ingredients, take your time with it, put it in oak and then drink it. That's it. Yes. And that's how they make good whiskey. And it was just so beautiful to me that these guys who do it in their backyard, who do it with their friends, do it for their family on small batches, there's there's that kind of um, handed down intricate knowledge between between families and whatever that just says, don't mess with it. And as if as if we need any convincing, right? Um, I know that you, Ben, you've you've been able to stand in that warehouse and you've been able to draw from that cask on the tour and sip straight from the barrel. And people often say, you know, the best whiskey you're ever going to taste is whiskey in a Dunnage warehouse or a really nice warehouse, right? Fantastic. You're going to be there in an environment. It's going to be kind of filling your senses, everything. But so much of it is because you're able to taste the impact of that cool, thick, heady spirit straight from the, the cask. It's like this, the whole reason the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society exists is because that happened yeah. in the early 80s to Pip Hills. Why doesn't our whiskey taste like this? He was hearing angels singing from a glass of whiskey and it didn't taste anything like the whiskey that he could buy in the shops. And that's that's kind of, you could consider that, this how single cask whiskies became a mass market thing through yeah. people like Pip Hills. And you're absolutely right. When you taste that, you know that in order to to when you could you taste what's actually available, 40, 43 percent, whatever it may be, the steps that have been taken, we're not going to shout at anybody for dilution. We know that 40, 43 percent is already a very hot spirit. That's, but there's that's, been steps taken, right? Sorry, that's go ahead. The one, that's the one thing that you know, you have your hierarchy. A B A B V for me is king. And I know I have I have a hot palate. I have a palate that preferences the the fifty nine sixty percent alcohol. But that's but, that, but you know that that's rich. only you. You're not gonna you're not gonna your pal who's never had a whiskey in his life. You're you're not gonna force a fifty nine percent on him and try and convince I, him that that's where it's at. I do, but it's over a number of years. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna give him that gentle hand, that guidance. The worst yeah. person that you can ever ask for guidance on whiskey is a whiskey geek. Because they're going to immediately pull you to where they are on their journey. Um, Andy, I'm going to ask you something here. I put a poll out on YouTube and ask people, do you care about this? Are you ambivalent or or do you even do you not know anything about it? What percentage do you think really, really care about this natural whiskey that we are talking about tonight? I think given the audience, probably the vast majority. Um, I think, you know, it, it's gonna it's gonna vary, isn't it? Um, I can't quite remember how the question was framed, to be honest, on, on the actual poll. You but I, I suspect I can't. Yeah, I, I saw it in, in uh, passing just before I, I came on. But I, I suspect that the the option around, um, you know, yeah, it means a lot, but I can look past it, kind of thing. I think I think that's my gut feeling. I'm um, shocked. I am really shocked. Now, this not only tells us a lot about the audience that's on YouTube that follow me and my channel and things, and you yeah. guys do. This is shocking to me until you consider, no, wait a minute, it's 2022. Look at this. Look at these numbers. We've got 857 wow. votes, right? 857 votes of which 91% are saying, I only buy natural color and non-chill filtered or I prefer natural, but I don't insist on it. Over 90% of our community. Now, our community is not representative of the, of the global market, of course, but that's way higher than I expected. Very only five percent are ambivalent, saying it doesn't affect their purchasing, and only three and a little tiny bit percent either say that they only go on flavour, or they don't really care or know what natural mm. whiskey is. Does that surprise anyone? Um, is this for, was this for your was it for your audience? Uh, I take it then. Uh, no, this was on my channel, Jenny. So it's my yeah. audience. It's, yes, absolutely. 
No, I'm not so surprised. Um, uh, I'm not surprised, but I, I've spent quite a lot of time in, in, in um, doing in-store pourings in, in retail shops and where um, you get the shop assistant being really passionate about whiskey, uh, but the person that comes in is looking for a gift for their uncle yes. or for their cousin or for whatever and have no interest in whiskey whatsoever and they're looking more at the price. And you can hear the shop assistant say, yeah, but this one is non-chill filtered. And, yeah. and, and the other person says, yes, this is 16. And this is the same price, you know, this yep. has got an age. So the people that buy for gifts, which is, let, let's be honest, the whiskey is a quite a common gift that you buy for yep. a colleague who's retiring or so. The, 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 yeah, um, I'm not surprised you have an audience that are passionate about the natural flavors and therefore you get that result, I think. But um, yep. yeah, I'm one, one of them. Like I, I, I love it for the mouthfeel and the, yeah. Yeah, for everything. And I think it doesn't take much of a flight even to a beginner, as long as somebody's whiskey curious or they're interested and they're willing to try it, you can, over the course of a flight, give them an inkling of what we're talking about. Let's get on to that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a link in the chat. And I know that you guys, everybody in the chat knows that you guys are not going to look at this. You're not interested in this. Um, all I'm going to do is drop this link in uh, so that people watching at home can see what you guys are drinking tonight. Now, they don't know which colour it matches what, but actually... Carl, should... can you message me, please? <laughs> <laughs> I know but, he's watching. But I, think it's important, <laughs> I think it's important that we just go with... In fact, I'm going to drop in what the colours are too. Let me do that uh, so that everybody can see the colours. And I'll delete that one. Everybody's dropping in now so they can see it. They can see the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got a little chart here. So I'll be able to manage uh, your favorites through to your least favorites. And then I'm going to just talk to you about each of these before I tell you what you're sipping. Okay. So the people, as you share your notes about this stuff, the, the people at home will know um, what, what you're referencing. They know what the colors are. They know what the whiskeys are. Ben... I'll ask you first, I'll, I'll just, the first thing I'm going to do is ask you for your favourite to least favourite and I'll plug that in as you talk to me and then you, we can go on with any kind of notes or, or, or things that, that's popped into your head as you've been sipping along and I appreciate, we caveat everything tonight that you're still on recovery back to full health um, but uh, I, I'll make the excuses for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I've already put my neck on the block a little bit and before we went live I've, I've told you I've I had some ideas. Um, I don't. How was my you, poker face? How was it? Was, <laughs> it was worryingly good. I <laughs> I'm getting better. Yeah. Good. Um, so, yeah, there was. Um, so, I'll go through my favorite to least favorite. Yeah, first. perfect. Just give me um, a color, favorite to least. There was one standout one, which I would say was my favorite um, by a decent mark, and that was orange. So, that's number one for me. Perfect. Then it was pink and pink kind of pipped third place as i've been sat here as we've gone live and i've been sat here analyzing it it was just behind but now it's now it's second in third place i went with green fourth place i went with red and then uh let's say joint fifth and sixth was yellow and blue put them in that order if you want yellow then blue yellow then blue Joint fifth and sixth. Yeah. Now, got Jenny, Andy. <laughs> I'm just and... sitting here making funny faces because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben and I are completely opposite. We're kind of meeting a little bit uh -oh. in the middle. No, I, but that's what I want to encourage. I want that to. I want that to happen. And Helen and Andy, who's at home with a set of drams, Doc yeah. McCallum Fine and Rare, put a set of these exact same whiskies in his hands last night. He's sitting in a hotel somewhere up in Brechin, <laughs> sipping along. <laughs> Um, I, I, would, I don't want anybody to panic about no. disagreement here because we'll talk through this. Well, Jenny, go ahead. Yeah, we all have different opinions, and, exactly. and but we know what we like. I, I, I understand. I, um, I would like to say I probably haven't tried, as I, I, even though I've been in the industry for, let's not say how many years, but a few. I, um, <laughs> I've probably not tried as many whiskies as you guys have. You, you really, I, I, I've tried, you know, umpting amounts of Kilcare and Springbanks, because that's where I used to work, and the same with Arden American, and about Brent Foreman brands. So I know those whiskies is okay. Like, I've tried them. Mind you, if there's one in here now tonight, I've, I've, I've jinxed it already. But um, I oh, am well, trying... Well, well, on that, Jenny, it's interesting you pick this up, because I've got a sample exchange going with somebody who makes whiskey in the industry for a living. And that person 
knows his product inside out. It's, yeah. that, it's that narrow experience, that narrow bandwidth, but he knows it to a very, very deep extent. Mm. Yeah. Whereas we are kind of much more shallow than that, but much, much wider. We've tried much yeah. more whiskies. So that, that there has to be a space where we can tap into that knowledge that they have. Um, and then they are able to access our opinions and think there has to be a place for that to happen. Sorry to interrupt, Jenny, but that's it's important no. to me. Continue, please. No, I, I mean, yeah. So I, I, I thought I'll go in with an open mind. That's because it's easy because my mind is usually blank. <laughs> no. I try the whiskies. I sent you a picture yesterday saying, look at me trying the whiskies. And you said, save some, save some. Save some, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want. I wanted just to see, um, just to try them. Over two I, nights. I wasn't, I wasn't sure how much time I had today. I broke open my kids' Christmas pens and I did a little color chart. Beautiful. So yesterday, Wednesday was this blue and yellow, pink, red, orange, and green. Interesting. Super. And um, I don't know if this is a coincidence, but that I feel like that's the Ukraine. Um, oh movie. yeah, yeah, I, yep, I, nothing I, subliminal. Yeah. Yeah, and then today it kind of was more yellow and blue, but um, the rest is the same: pink, red, orange, and green. So I don't know. I have no idea. And Connell still hasn't told me what I'm trying, so he's he's not very helpful. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 if you've got a man on the inside, he'll be sitting back with a smirk on his face going, I'm oh, not yeah. you. and if he does tell you, we know Connell, don't listen to him, Jenny, right? No, 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 I'll do my own. Uh, I'll, so I'll, just to I'll double say, check. That was, my, that was my preference, yeah. And I know Just to double um, check, you've gone yellow, blue, pink, red, orange, green. Red, orange, green. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so that's now on the public thing. So Andy... You'll probably be different again. Don't don't stress this, Andy. This really, I'll still, I'll still get works. flashbacks to the Christmas blind taste, and I'm like, oh come on, Andy. No, um, no, no, don't buddy, don't buddy. I, I don't, I'll still sit up in a cold do, sweat at like 3 a.m. I rely on you, my friend. I rely on you to be able to come up and do this. Uh, you know, well, I need to make it as fun as possible for you. <laughs> Go ahead, my friend. What's your favorite? Right. I did. I did a bit, a bit of chopping and changing, as you can see from all, all the scribbles and stuff. But I've, I've settled. I think on, on red first being my favourite. Good. Um, <laughs> Ben's just chuckled, which doesn't fill me full of confidence there. No, um, just... Yellow for second. Okay, so good. red first, yellow second. Um, and this one I, I switched around a couple of times, pink and orange. But I think I'm going to settle on, on pink for, th for third. So, uh, so yellow is second. Yeah, pink third. Pink third. Uh, orange fourth. Green okay. fifth. And then blue was my least favourite at sixth. Oh. Superb. Good. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do then is, um, I suppose, Helen and Andy, Doc, and uh, if you guys could... What's that me? Big difference of opinion here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> or I tell you what I'm gonna do then. I'll 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 move this all. Can I do this live? I'll just update the ones that everybody can see. Um and I'll while I do this and, and make it a bit more clear for everyone to see, I'll ask you then every blind tasting that we've ever had or or, or put together on this channel has had huge, huge differences. Right, we've never had a consensus. That's really frustrating for me because I want everybody to agree with me and what I like. <laughs> right? Sorry, I, want, I, want, I want you to say, "Oh no, Roy, you're absolutely right. I, you don't like this, and I can see why you don't like it. And oh, I can see why you love this. That's not actually what happens. We get huge variation, so we always have to caveat caveat it with how it's coming in on the night at that moment in time." It's how the whiskies are interacting with each other in the flight. Six whiskies is a lot to have on any flight. Six whiskies at the same time going backwards and forwards can be very confusing. I know that I sound like I'm making up excuses, but everybody that's watching this that hasn't done this exercise, they need to understand that this is part of it. So I fully expect, like Helen and Andy back at home right now, that that's going to be absolutely part of it. How often do you do blind tasting Jenny at work um 
Yeah, so we don't, um, actually, we don't, we're all home-based. Do you mean as a group? Do we do, we do as, a, as, a, as an exercise altogether? Because we, we, I... we're home-based, so we, 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 we take turns and we'll be in the office, but not always at the same time. When we do the blending, um, we we still know what we're noticing. So it, I wouldn't say it's a blind. Uh, we know the sample and we say yes or no, but we can't. This is how it works. I don't have a poker face. I don't know if that's evident because <laughs> I keep <laughs> making all these funny faces. I have no poker face. So Graham McKay and our team uh, asks for me to be the last person to know any of the samples because I'll give away if I want it in or not. <laughs> and then we decide if it goes in or not. But um, we don't do any blind tastings um, on a regular basis. Something we maybe should start, though. Um, don't get me but, wrong. But every sample that you're sipping, you're open-minded and ambivalent. You're just mm -hmm. going to make a decision whether you like it or not, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in yeah. that sense, I, I suppose all of what you do is blind. Yeah. But yeah, it, it doesn't matter um, what year it is or if it's a peated or non peated if it's sherried or not. You know, if we like it, it's it's good. Sometimes we like it so much that um, we put a wee star on it and it goes to a, um, as a single cask. But we don't... Um, I do... I, I have been to the blind tastings before and I've, I've done one here with you before and I, I really enjoy it. Um, but I would like somebody else to organise it. <laughs> Just, yes. <laughs> I'd like to say I'm too busy. You're probably not organised enough myself to get to do it. I, it's nice when somebody else has organised it and it's great fun. I think it's, if you're in a whiskey club, this is the only way to taste whiskey, I think. Because to move, take away the branding, take away the what you're supposed to think, take away... Uh, what do you you think you know and i mean i've done tastings all over the world and it's funny and in some countries you almost know what they're going to say because you, you've been there before and what what flavors they prefer and they're so um adamant that the age is the only thing and and, and chill filtration is the only thing or whatever you know and and you almost want to prove them wrong and and mm -hmm. um it becomes a bit of a competition in you when you're holding a tasting yeah. and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and just to say that by the end of the night they'll come up and say oh, actually i did like that whiskey well you tried it you didn't know what it was and you liked it so there <laughs> but that's that's the thing i mean we we all know that it's subjective we all know that it's down to our own personal preferences yeah. and it might change tomorrow it might change next week yeah. right we all know that we don't have a consistent palate we don't have the same it's down to mood and moment everything however yeah. if you are sipping blind you're spot on jenny what you're doing is you're not you're not you're not weaving in everything you know about that whiskey how much you love or don't love that brand yeah. how your previous experiences with a distillery with the age to the style of whiskey whatever it may be and that is the the most and that's why i from the day I started the channel in 2017, I was obsessed by blind tasting because of how much it had affected. I, I, I knew it all. Yeah. I, I knew it all. I knew what I liked. I knew it. And then I started to yeah. blind taste and I, I didn't know a thing. I was clueless. Yeah. Right. It's and embarrassing and you become quite vulnerable. I'm I'm nervous about the whiskeys mm -hmm. I picked as, as my, I am, I am, but I don't know why, because why would I be? It doesn't matter. But I That's have that right. nervousness back when I were going, oh, what did I like? <laughs> I Listen, mean, wouldn't it be nice if we could get to a place where we could be confident about our preferences, right? Point, yeah. Yeah. And not, and not have to, you don't have to compete. We don't need consensus and we're not going to get consensus. I've been doing blind challenges on this channel for for years for live we've been doing it live and yeah. this is very difficult i appreciate what i'm asking you three to do tonight and everybody that's done a blind step up and do it live <laughs> it's very very if you don't have humility beforehand you'll have humility before you leave yeah and the only reason that people agree is that they, they know enough about whiskey to know that it's capable of giving us all a red face and until we get to that point and dissolve this idea of being some kind of podium where, I, where some godlike expert knows everything, right? Yeah. We can't all be Ben Whiskey Geek, right? <laughs> we can't all. But, you know, just this thing, that does not exist. No. And, and, and especially when whiskey is just about enjoyment, just about making us feel nice, a, a nice, delicious flavor. Whatever goes in that moment goes, and there's nothing to be questioned about it. I appreciate there's some, you feel the responsibility in your shoulders because you're putting yeah. a product there to market. But don't change anything and don't let doubt creep in because everything's been great so far. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. I was just on the note, we were talking about tour guides earlier. 
and yes. you know, our tour guides play a big part in, in in welcoming you to the distillery and i just recently had a, ta a training session with our um shop staff and tour guides about tasting whiskey and um started from scratch we had um jars of herbs and everything out and it was just glasses yeah. of whiskey with th they didn't know what was in the, it was our whiskies um and they didn't know what was in it and they just said let's just go back because the blind tasting it's okay but people can freeze and go oh i don't know what to say now so instead of thinking of what you have to say ask the questions and this is something i've nicked from charlie mclean or from other from older generations but they it, it's ask yourself is this whiskey peaty just start simple like is the whiskey yes. peaty? Broad brush, big white. Yeah. yeah. Is it fruity? Is it is if it's fruity, is it citrus or is it plum? So you, you you just you work your way back and just ask these questions. And I said to our guides, like every day is going to be different for you. You're not going to be able to describe the whiskey the same every day. That's not human. That's not normal. Why would you? You're you're you have different experiences every day. But just do go back to your memories and straight away we were talking about memories about granny's flower gardens and baking over you know and, and it was really quite nice to see how they kind of just grew in confidence as well knowing that they didn't have to follow a script they just needed to use their own experience and and their own memories and uh, i think it's just that's the more the, the more we can dissolve this idea of somebody knowing and i think wine has a lot of responsibility yeah. in this this idea that people can and maybe wine is capable of doing that but whiskey is a distilled spirit and it's there seems to be much much more variables and i'm just in scotch here without going outside of scotland so if we dissolve the idea that you should pick up a glass and know exactly what's in it that's only a good thing but i do think that there is some objective angles that you could some of the things that we're talking about tonight does require us to accept some responsibility that if we demand chill filtration if we demand color and things and say yeah we can taste the difference I can. On one of the whiskies that we have tonight, I think the reason I cannot drink it is because of the amount of colour that's in the bottle. And the I reason I think that is because... Sorry? So I wonder if it's the same one as I have a similar thing with Abs I can guarantee you it's not. Oh, because it's, okay. it's a smorgasbord of variation. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no consistency here at all, or very little. So it's not the case. Yeah. So I, there's a responsibility on all of us as we review these whiskies. And if I stand up there and say, I hate this, this is terrible. I, I've just proven tonight without without going a step further that I, I don't get agreement from you guys and I don't get agreement from Helen and Andy and Doc in the background sipping the exact same whiskey. Okay. Yeah. That's important for all of us to understand and know. So anyway, let's have a wee look. I'll share this with you. There's nothing exciting about this apart from the fact that it's a mess. But I'll share it with you because it's it's important. Um, this is the we, we would expect to see some colours of agreement here but no <laughs> I'm going to do this here make it a wee bit bigger um, <laughs> that's, I mean that's uh, cute. Th there's just there's nothing that we can nothing right Look, it's, it's ridiculous and it's Christmas all over again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, I cannot see any consistency along there. So I'm, I'm going to show, I'm going to share with you what the whiskies are. But the first thing I need to do um, is get rid of mine and let you see where I am to see if there's anybody close to me. And I guarantee you, it's there's not. <laughs> look at that. Okay, Andy and I agree on our favourite, but look at the yeah. reds everywhere else. You know, uh, Andy and Helen have put it in the middle of the ground. Doc's put it close to the end. Ben and Jenny in the middle as well. My yeah. least favourite, so the, I'm giving away the one that I'm talking about, Pink. But Pink's done reasonably. It's not anybody's favourite, but Ben's got it second. It's in the middle ground for everybody else except for Andy back uh, in Milton Keynes, and he's put it at the end alongside me as well. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe it's the finish or something. Maybe it's that thing. But I'm telling you that's that one because I have had a bottle of caramel colour We'll come back to this again. This this is interesting. We'll come back to this. I had a bottle of caramel colour here. I gave it to Matthew uh, up in Aberdeen, and he used it at a tasting over Christmas. I've not got it back yet, but I had a cocktail stick, and I tasted the colour, and I, please, don't ever do that. I could taste it for, for days. It was awful. It put me off whiskey. It put me off drinking any whiskey. It's such an acrid, awful, bitter, 
uh, it's not if you could have any sense of tasting it before you put it in your mouth, your body, every your, all your senses would tell you not to touch this thing. It's <laughs> awful. It stained my tongue. <laughs> so you know, don't don't try to taste caramel coloring. However, the aftertaste, the the memory of that, I can pick up in whiskies occasionally, and not all the time, but sometimes. I'm suspicious that it's whiskies that are not just colored, and this is important, but they're heavily colored. They've used ridiculous amounts. Ben, if we go back two years ago, you remember being on a VPUB where we actively colored whiskey together. Yeah. yeah. And we proved that you could taste the difference, but it was a very, very specific thing that we did there. We knew we were coloring one and not the other, so we knew what to look for, but we could taste it, remember? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's what I'm talking about tonight. I think there are times that in the industry that color is cynically used because we buy, we are idiots. We buy with our eyes. Even enthusiasts look, oh, look at the color of that. It's as dark as Coca-Cola. Ooh. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it is definitely a thing. But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that should be stolen from us. If somebody takes a pale whiskey and makes it dark artificially because they know that, that's cynical and it cannot it, it cannot endure. That cannot happen in 2022. I, I just don't believe. I think for me, it's not ABV, Ben. It's color that's floated to the top of my, it's the, it's the thing that frustrates me more. Anyway, you guys, you want to see what you're sipping tonight, right? Mm. Can I, <laughs> can I, I make a take on myself? Would it be okay if we yeah, didn't go, go, go ahead? And, I don't know, I'm uh, nervous about this bit. <laughs> go ahead, Ben. So there was a couple of things that I um, thought. Firstly, the only thing that we knew going into this was that you had picked three distilleries and you'd yes. done pairs of each. And I think the way you phrased it was that one of them was um, less natural than the other in a, a regard. You said something along those lines. So going into this, exactly. I couldn't help but think... Which dis which are from the same distillery, and okay. so I thought um, orange and green were the same distillery, and I thought they were possibly a Tully Barden, and I kind of feel like that comfort zone, if you like, because I quite like Tully Barden, was what made me enjoy them possibly um, a bit bold. Um, then I thought the uh, yellow was a uh, Klein Leash 14. Um, and I thought the blue was most similar to that, possibly. Um, then I also thought that red was a Diageo, which started, it led me down the line of it possibly being a Taninic. And then pink was closest to that. So I kind of paired them along those lines. <laughs> Love it, Ben. Thank you. Want, Love it. I'll I'll commit to what I think may be coloured as well, if you want. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, so I think that um, orange is coloured. Okay. I think that yellow is coloured. It being Klein Leash, although not heavily so. Um, it being the uh, 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 official bottling. And um, similarly, um, pink, uh, possibly a little synthetic, possibly chill filtered, possibly coloured. You need to move to Scotland, buddy. How come? <laughs> I mean, I don't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> next, next, I mean, some of the things that you've said are going to frustrate you a wee bit, but you're, um, despite the fact that you've uh, just recovered from. Uh, Severe sensory depravity, right? Uh, literally, Luna Aaron saying Ben is a wizard. This is unbelievable. Yeah, um, you've not you've not got everything spot on, and it's interesting some of the things that you've got wrong. But mm. I just went. I just I have, I'm constantly in your company and falling silent, buddy. I love drinking whiskey with you. Uh, no pressure, <laughs> Jenny and Andy. Um, I mean, just but the most important thing is is that what we want to do is just express how you feel. Do you feel any of the drams, Jenny, tonight? Were I'm with faith going through a tunnel tangible. right now. <laughs> Sorry? It says, I'm with faith going through a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> no signal. <laughs> I'm so intimidated by Ben. Oh, my God. 
it's all opinion. Yeah. It's all opinion. And yeah, okay, I've just okay. been told that I was wrong. So I was, you know, when we did a chat before the show, I was quite happy when you said about the green being a Tilly, Tilly Barden, because that's what I had. That was the only whiskey I could try and name. And it was the green. I thought it was the Tilly Barden. I thought it was coloured, but I don't know. I mean, I've put a wee note of whether I think they're chill filtered or non-chill filtered and uh, coloured or not. But I haven't even I haven't even tried to guess what distilleries they're from. I, I'm I'm sorry if you want your money back for that. That's but... <laughs> yeah, Jenny, just Jenny, just that's exactly all I need from you, Ben. Um, and I'm glad he does it. Felt strongly about some of the things that because of his frame of reference he, he felt confident about it but you you, you drink so much hardener marking in adelphi that you know it's how can you the stuff that ben and, and myself and andy are drinking you know you, you would be a really sick person if you took on that as well as what you're already doing for your day <laughs> job right <laughs> so we understand this but i think that you've probably got a decent handle on what you think may be colored so let's let's just share what you think of the oh the, dear the okay. ones. well i thought i thought i think i know ben said the yellow was colored but i've said non-color on that one yep and i think it's non-chill filtered as well based on yep. my thoughts yesterday and um, and they're still sticking and the orange i think is colored and although today it was a bit yeah i, I think it's colored i i can't decide whether it's chill filtered or not. I'm trying to do the whole like how how rich and oily is it? How how does it coat my mouth? But it's really mm -hmm. hard when you've tried a few um to know the difference. Especially so there's no science here. I'm giving you six yeah. whiskies. Your palate's yeah. going to be super confused. Yeah. Yeah. The red one, um the red one I put um question mark whether it's colored or not. Um, I find it quite weak. It really, um, not much to it. So I, I, I can't decide what is, it. I think it's chill filtered, but I don't know if they've added color or not. Uh, the pink one, uh, I've put color on that one. And um, <laughs> I'm going to say there was a hint of silicon in it, but I had another word, a term for it, but I wasn't allowed to say it in this live show because it, Sounds rude. <laughs> we're after we're, we're we're beyond the watershed. It's eleven o'clock at night, Jenny. It's, it's a sealant that builders use. <laughs> and oh, <I> <laughs> uh, so we spell it C L C A U L K. Maybe. No, is that <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> Colk. <laughs> right. I um. Yeah, I've put color and. I actually put color and chill filter on that one, but now I'm not sure when I just tried it. I don't think that's chill filter, so take that away. But color, yes. Green one, um, color. I've put color for that one. And Green. this one I find really sulfury. Um, I've put fermented octopus on there. <laughs> wow. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fermented bit, oh, octopus. it actually made me... So I'm, I know this is, um, yeah, I just find it really, you know, that oyster sauce when you just open it, but but like really quite maybe old oyster sauce. <laughs> right. I get yeah, it. There, yeah. is, there, is, there is a savory. There is a mm. slightly umami savory um, lick to it. Yes. I've never yes. picked it up before, but wow. Yeah. So you think uh, the colored three that you think, if I understand you well, is orange, pink and green. Orange pink and green yeah and then the blue one i really quite like the blue one and um, it's got tobacco leaf cream donut a lot of my tasting notes i noticed were bakery related this when i was writing them um probably because i'm i'm on a Hungry. calorie restricted diet at the moment for everything is tasting of bakery <laughs> Jenny will be doing a, a midnight cruise to the closest Krispy Kreme donuts after this. Pumpkin donuts. Yeah, so uh, I've put non-chill filter, non-coloured on the blue one. I don't know if I made any sense at all there. but So I, I think, so yellow, blue, red, you've got, uh, I know that you're on the fence about red, but orange, pink and green. Fantastic. Yeah. So orange, pink and green. Okay, good. Good. Andy, Hello. buddy. <laughs> no, don't be, don't be, don't <laughs> Look, it's fine. I, it, it's as soon as I'll be honest. As soon as 
I asked you, I asked, heard you ask Ben first. I literally wrote down, oh no, because I knew that I was <laughs> coming after him. <laughs> like at the top of my page, yeah, it just says, oh no. Because I'm like, I'll, well. I'll, I'll make a promise to you next time I'll ask you first, buddy. I'd, 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 I think I might just do the, uh, the going through a tunnel thing, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, these things, I think we said before, Dave. Alive, you know, I mean, these things changed a lot for me over the, the hour or so that I tried them prior to joining, and they've changed again over the course of the evening. Um, I think for me, I'll start off with, with red. I think red and yellow are the same distillery. Okay, um, I've written them on the same page, I've scribbled, and there's, there's a reason I'm going to say this, and I'm going to probably sound like a bit of an idiot, but I tried. Gordon and McPhail or Pulteney recently that really reminded me of, of yellow. But then when I tried red after it, there was this banana kind of mm. foam banana note, which I know is okay. sort of, a, you know, it's a bit of a whiskey tasting bingo word, isn't it? Foam bananas. But it's something that I get from, from that bottle behind me, which is the turquoise uh, Feta Cairn Warehouse. So I'm telling whether it's what Pulteney. Um, okay. I think... Yeah, so I think red, natural colour, non-chill filtered, um, yellow. I'm undecided on colour, to be honest, but let's let's say let's say natural again. Um, but chill filtered, and no doubt I've got those the wrong way around. Mm-hmm. Um, I think strength wise, th- for, for me, red so, initially drank stronger, but I'm sort of tend to switch to be honest. So you think, if I understand you well, you think yellow? Those are both the same distillery, but you think yellow is a natural so. one. I think is more right? natural, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Hang on. Do so you think that red is coloured? <laughs> <laughs> One second. Just, so just, 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 just let me change my mind. Yeah, we know better yeah, than let's go for eyes, it. buddy. Let's go for it. So that, yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's lock, lock, lock that in. Um, I love this. I love it. Andy, I love it. Tremendous. Don't say that. Does, that does, that no, fills me with dread when you say that, Roy good. Duff. It's very positive. It's very positive. <laughs> just go with it, my friend. Right. Okay. Let, let's, let, let's crack on then. Um, so I think the ones, and I did change these actually around because they changed over the course of the evening. Blue was my least favourite, and I appreciate I'm going from the bottom now, but for me, I got a load of sulphur on the nose, um, and that kind of followed through on the palate for me as well. Um, I actually wrote sweet and sulphur chicken. Okay. Um, <laughs> as a tasting note, which is up there with octopus, don't get me wrong. But, um, and then it got a bit soapy, and I, I think I said before the live, um, I had a feeling that was Dal Ewan just purely because it's sulfury, meaty, but probably completely wrong. Um, okay, for good. Blue, for blue, I went um, coloured, uh, 43%, and chill filters, okay. even though it's still quite oily. Um, oh. I think my gut feeling is that is paired with either green or pink, seeing how I've done it now. Sorry. Yeah, I think I've gone blue and green, the same distillery. Blue and green. Um, yeah, because again, the green on the palette, I got some more of that sulfur again, just towards the end, um, okay, before some good. chocolate kicked in. Um, and I think green, I've gone for natural colour and 43%. Good. I think I put that as chill filter, actually, as well. Green. Okay. <laughs> so that... That leaves us with orange and pink, right? So there's only one coloured one that you've left to commit to. What's the final coloured one? So out of um, the only ones that you've not mentioned is orange. Yeah. And? Pink, I think. Should be pink. Orange and so pink, I, yeah. Yeah, so I think out of the two of them, I'm going to go with pink being coloured, only because orange reminds me of something that I gave away a bottle of recently, and I think it was natural colour, but I can't remember. So... Yeah, I'm going for pink. I'm going for colours, and but not chill filters. I'm actually going to have that as not chill filters. Pink. All and, right. Yeah, well, orange the other way. I don't know how to summarise this for you, but I think the best thing for me to do is just to pull up the things on the screen. And don't worry about this. Don't stress about this. Your notes are important. The takeaway from tonight is that nobody should trust anything I say on the VPUB about whiskey. Nobody should trust me if they trust Ben, Jenny, and Andy. 
because very few of you are agreeing with the things that I've been excited about and raving about. Definitely don't trust me, guys. It's amazing. It's amazing to see. Let's pull this up, guys, so that you can see this. Here are the whiskies that you're, but it's not not the colours yet. I'm just I'm going to play with the, the whole dynamic a wee bit longer. Yeah. Here are the whiskies that we're drinking tonight. You're enjoying this. Oh, that occurring. And underneath is the A B C Ds. If it's red, it does not match A B C Ds. If it's green, it does. So clearly, we've got the old Glenturra as it used to be, forty three percent, no age statement. Uh, likely chill filtered. It doesn't say anything on the bottle <clears throat> and likely coloured because it doesn't say natural colour. It may <laughs> not be coloured. It may absolutely not be coloured, but it doesn't say in a bottle, so it gets a red. A, B, C, D, the new Glen Turret is absolutely everything checked. And I think it makes a considerable leap forward. But that doesn't necessarily pan out on what you guys have discovered tonight. And Doc and Helen and Andy and it's sipping in the background, the same. Fetter Cairn, 16. The previous had an age statement. The bottling strength was 46.4% ABV, but there was so much caramel colour in that bottle that I can taste it. The finish is acrid to me. I cannot drink this whiskey. Tonight, I'll drink everything that's in the glasses in front of me except for that whiskey. I really don't enjoy it. And I think if it was poured for me blind, I might be able to quite happily sit there and drink it, but it would always have that finish for me. The, the new Fetter Cairn, the exact same, 46.4% ABV, is fully natural. And it's cheaper as well. Maybe going back to what Jenny was talking about there, less costs and adding colour and filtering it, right? It's cheaper. Okay, it's a 70 CL, whereas the previous one was a litre. Fine. Then lastly, we've got two Klein Leash. The old Klein Leash has got an age statement, and it's got a bottling strength of 46% ABV. Great. And I'm suspicious that that C for chill filtration should be green, but it doesn't say on a bottle, so it gets red. But we've got a fully natural 46, there's a 16 year old one that's next to it um, from an independent bottler, but it's at 46% ABV and it's fully natural. Now, what I want you to do guys, if indulge me for a wee bit here, lift up your glasses, look at any of them and tell me which ones are cloudy just by you sipping them. Are any of them clouding up? Is it only me that spits back into the glass as I drink it? <laughs> well, maybe it's just colder where you are. Maybe it's a bit colder here, but I am telling you now that there are four that have clearly clouded up and two that are as fresh and as clear as you like. Here are the, the two... Oh, what's this one? Orange. Oh, no, that's clouded up a wee bit now, too. I don't know. But these are the clearest, let's say, these two. Can you see these? Those are nice and clear now that it's focused. Mm. And then let me show you the rest. I don't know if you can see. Mm. That's quite murky. Mm. Uh, this one, it's not really showing up on camera, but in, in real life, this is this is the cloudiest. So hopefully that shows up. Can you see? Yeah. How oh. Wow, yeah. That? And finally, this. These are, it's not shown on camera as well, but I'm telling you as I look in the glass here compared to the other two, that it's clouded up. Um, I don't know if it's temperature, I don't know if it's dilution, I don't know what's happened there, um, but some whiskies do that as we sip them. Anyway, you want to know what you're sipping, right? Here it is. Da, da, da. Now, this is super interesting because right <laughs> out the bat, Let's start with Andy. He was, in, he was he was up in the north of Scotland. He was talking about old Pulteney. What he actually picked out was Klein Leash. What he was talking about was Klein Leash. Now, I, I get that. I get that. I've had that kind of that coastal element. That there's something about the palate. There's something about the thing that would take you up there. Um, I, I get that you would have got close to those two. Um, pink you picked out is coloured absolutely the pink I'm talking about is the Fetter Cairn 16 for me it's it's not just about the acrid finish there's an emulsification there's a smoothing there's a flattening of the palate it kind of takes the peaks the jagged edges away too it kind of smooths and rounds everything out um, don't know if I could be talking nonsense but to me that's how it affects me um, so you got that absolutely right the blue Interestingly, um, I know that you weren't keen on the blue, eh, but that's the Fetter Cairn that I love because it just mm -hmm. brings so much freshness and brightness there. It is challenging. Fetter Cairn's not 
an easy to access malt. Yeah. But I think it's five times better when it's natural. There's so much more interest there rather than trying to soften and smooth and, and engineer. We talked about that contrived flavor palette. Um, so, so that's interesting. And I think that you, uh, you mentioned the red as well, that it was actually the natural red that you thought. But you got two, you got two of them, right, Andy? Jenny, um, your colouring, you said you thought it was orange, which you're correct. Pink, you're correct. It's only the green that you got that you got wrong. Mm. I think the green is very dark. But if you sip the green, take a wee tiny sip of the green if you've got any left, Jenny. Yeah. And then think about the finish, process the finish on that. It goes on for days. And then take a sip of the pink, which is almost the same color. And the pink, the finish drops off a cliff. It's it's quite frighteningly different. So again, two out of three. Ben, you just kicked it out of the park. Not only did you pick every single colored whiskey, you also said that yellow was Klein Leach 14. Yellow is Klein Leach 14. You didn't know that Klein Leach was in the lineup. I am not feeding you information ahead of time. I've witnessed this with you time and time again. You've got far too many little taste buds in your olfactory setup, my friend. <laughs> You're a freak of nature, but it's wonderful to see. You've picked that out now. Remember when you were here, Ben, and you came to me and you said, Roy, I do mm -hmm. not get why you rave about Klein Leash. Mm -hmm. Prove to me. Tell me what it is about Klein Leash. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I sure do. And I poured you an old bottle of Klein Leash 14-year-old, a very old one. And you took a sip and you went, oh, wow, I get it. <laughs> so I don't know if that helped you somewhat tonight if you've been investigating that a bit further, but that that was shocking. I should be looking at the chat because I know the chat is going to be like, what's going on here? He's like bionic. Ben is amazing. Ben should change his name to Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> P-Dram is saying that the reactions are priceless. And Gregor is saying, remind me not to ever sip from your cup, backwasher. <laughs> yeah, be careful. <laughs> I think it might be a wee, bit, a wee bit cool in here. I don't know. I'm making excuses now, Gregor. But yeah. Um, I guarantee you, it, it's it's not about the backwash. It's about how precious the liquid is. Believe me, buddy. <laughs> I must um, say, I was quite. Um, the the Klein Leach is my safe whiskey. You know, when you're in a place where there's a bar, and you, you can always more or less get like a Klein Leach 14. You know, yes. the ashes. That's my go-to like safe whiskey. And I wonder if that's why I scored it like that. Put it up at the top because it's somebody I'm a whiskey somebody whiskey is now person people it, it's some it's a whiskey i'm familiar with and, and i i feel at home with me too yeah. jenny honestly and and we talk about uh there was a bottle i had there that was really poor and thin and because it was on offer i went back to clean leash again i decided to give it another chance i'm so glad i did because the last two bottles that i've had have been right back up. maybe not up there with the absolute best i've had there is batch variation and even yeah. mass market big volume single malts um, but it's but it's back to really enjoyable again, and I'm glad that that's happened. It's mm. okay for there to be dips. It just becomes part of the conversation, right? Klein Leash 14, we've never really been overcharged for that. It's still affordable. I don't know what Diageo is going to do with it long term, but it's still there. And I, I feel the same as you. It's one of these safe, absolutely yeah. safe malts. But the takeaway from this is that out of the three of us, now I've not, I don't know about Doc, Doc and Andy and Helen could maybe put it under the comments underneath after the videos uh, closed tonight to see how they scored. But out of the the potential uh, nine that you that we had tonight, there's been uh, seven out of nine you've picked out the coloured whiskies. Nothing scientific. There's nothing scientific about it. Did anybody try the green and then the pink there, Andy? Yeah. I mean, at first, I really struggled with green and pink because I actually sort of looked at them next to each other in the sample bottle and they were almost identical. I, and I mean, when I say almost colour. identical, they colour. were, yeah, in colour, sorry, yeah, yeah. It was, I put it up against a piece of paper and everything and I was like, this is the same whiskey. <laughs> and then over time, as it opened up, I was like, this is not the same whiskey. What fresh hell is this? What <laughs> wizardry is going on here? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as things went on, it, it 
then sort of came about that I decided to pair orange with one of them. And because originally, hand, hand, hand on heart, when I first tried this, and I don't mind admitting it, I thought this was Glendron at 15 when it used to have the non chill filter thing on it, and the Glendron at 15 when they suck it off. Now, whether or not they actually chill filtered it after that, I don't know. That was my initial first gut feeling. Well, well, the, the information from the distillery on that, I can give you a wee intermission update, is that um, they they have never, um, it's to do with exports to the US, as it turns out, uh -huh. and, thing, um, and to do with how products labelled for the US. I don't know if this is an excuse, but this is the latest information that we're hearing out now, and they have never uh, chill-filtered Glendronic 15, never. Um, so th that's interesting. Mm. But all of you picked pink ahead of green. So I think there's something about the, the, the pink tonight that you that you guys have enjoyed. And there's something about the pink that I cannot get past. I cannot get over. I can't. It's not acceptable to me. But the new Fetter Cairn 16 is full of tropical fruit. It's vibrant. There's grapefruit in there. There's, there's odd uh, vibes. It's, it's an interesting whiskey. It's, I want to keep going back and having more. And somebody mentioned the Fetter Cairn uh, warehouse tonight. I, I loved, loved, loved the Fetter Cairn warehouse. Interestingly, coincidentally, a very natural product too. Um, but previously in the past, we were never able to buy an official Fetter Cairn that wasn't engineered mm -hmm. within an inch of its life. Yeah. So we're still getting our head around how Fetter Cairn perceive their whiskey in the modern sense through Greg Glass. So, you know, there's no conclusions other than the fact that you don't necessarily dislike coloured whiskies, but you're able to pick them out. Would that be an acceptable takeaway, Ben? Yeah, yeah, that <clears throat> sounds about right to me. And that's why I, people get hung up on a hell of a lot of things within whiskey. And I'd rather things weren't coloured, sure, because looking at my notes on this, there's nothing about it that I've enjoyed that seems to indicate that it's down to it being coloured or whatever else. But the colouring doesn't get in the way of what I've enjoyed about it. Just as a point of note, this is the one that I uh, I put down dense pickled onion. Which was it? This is the uh, pink, the um, yeah. the, feta, the feta can I don't have a bottle of, the one you don't like. It's linseed oil, it's um, pickled onion, it's sourness, oaky, hint of tobacco, some lemon pith, lots of tropical fruits, uh, some chocolate, cask char, coffee bean. It's it's just a lot, a lot. Jenny, of I think you need to invite Ben to the next blending session that you do. Oh, he's there. <laughs> um, Definitely. I, I, I think it's. Uh, I think it's. Um, I'm taking a sip of it now, and again, it's the finish for me. It's the mid palate to the finish. It just goes very thin and very, and I can taste. It, it reminds me of the taste that I'm talking about when I stuck the cocktail six, the cocktail stick. Sorry, in that. A bottle of E150A. Damp mulchy cardboard. No, I, it, no, it's really, it was <clears> awful. <throat> it was very, very brutally bitter. It's, it was acrid. Mm. Burnt, not even burnt sugar, but but imagine burnt sugar and beyond that burnt sugar. Mm. Real industrial, um, a it's really an unpleasant thing. And it and it hangs around for, for a long, long time. Now, most of the time there are tiny drops. Undetectable amounts used to colour whiskey. We know this. Sometimes, let me show you. I, I know I've done it before, but I, it's not because I'm giving them a hard time. It's actually because I want to celebrate them because this is what the 16-year-old used to look like. And this is what the 16-year-old looks like now. Yeah. Can we see the difference there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's clear. Is there anything to be ashamed about that being the colour of a 16-year-old whiskey? No. It's, it's, this is honesty. We can engage with this. We can celebrate the colour of this. We can really dive into the flavour, knowing that it has not been cosmetically altered. This is a bottle of truth. And I don't care what people say. You can't taste the difference, so don't tell me that we... Sorry. You're abusing our lack of experience in order to make a more cosmetically acceptable product. And you're, you're, 
you're making it sound okay because I'm not at the level yet where I can detect it. That is fundamentally, I don't know any other food product where that's acceptable. I, I just, it's, it's to me, it's cosmetic. I understand that there's a legacy. I understand that there's a place for it. But Fetter Cairn 16 and much of the whiskies that you've shared with me tonight are not cheap whiskies. They're not 25 pounds in Asda. They mm. are, they are premium products. So if you play with them and you engineer them and it costs you money to do that, maybe that was acceptable in the 70s and the 80s, but this is 2022 and we're going to talk about stuff like this. And my experience over the course of my drinking hundreds and hundreds of whiskies is that I prefer it. We didn't, we didn't prove that tonight necessarily, <laughs> but I prefer it, that it's natural for no other reason than we can celebrate the truth of it, the colour the condition of it, all of it. It's real. It's not being concocted or contrived in a way that somebody thinks that we should be able to enjoy it better. Anyway, that's that's my uh, soapbox enthusiast rant. <laughs> you got to take away from it, Andy. Have you got anything that you... Yeah, you know, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed, you know, doing it, to be fair. It's it's always good to, to do a blind tasting. And, you know... <sighs> It doesn't. It didn't surprise me. I think some of the choices in terms of my favourite and my, my rating. To be honest, the orange one. I was actually gutted. I didn't speak up a bit sooner because that's if that was was the the Glen Turret Sherry Cast, the old version. Yes, absolutely. That's what forty three forty three percent. Yes. The yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's that's the one that I gifted to a friend, and I described it in the past as a house whiskey because it is just one of those you can just pass around. There's not that it's enjoyable. It's good. Yeah. This, this thing, it was very enjoyable. I didn't look down at it at the time when I got it. And I still want now, knowing what it is. Um, and yeah, you know, there's always going to be people that will fly the flag of, of never wanting colour or chill filtration. And there's even a few people that just say they don't drink cast strength and things. And that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, the industry's backbone is built on. 40% is, you know, blends that are full of colouring. Um, so if you go into any bar in the world, Shanghai, Manchester, wherever, and you go up to somebody enjoying, enjoying a whiskey, nine times out of ten you say, is that chill filter no. natural colour? They won't say yes or no. They'll say, what the hell are you talking about? And that's, Absolutely. you know, that, that funds all the whiskies that we enjoy, our, our no, geeky whiskies. So. I know. But, but I think I, I don't know how it's going to change in time. Hmm. I mean, it's not It's not just about, the oh, you're not capable, you're not mm. able to detect this, so don't ask for things that you, that, I mean, that, that's that's almost kind of rude. It's kind of, um, interestingly, I'm just, uh, Peter Lee's talking about natural all the way. Falscraft is saying my problem with colouring is I'm deprived of an experience of the truth. Um, so it's that, that's the kind of thing, that's, the, that's it. If we, if we believe what's written on the tubes and on the packaging and on the websites, and if we believe what's on the bottle, Mm. Then, then we discover these things. Wait, wait, th this is altered. This isn't actually the color. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, what's been removed <laughs> from this? You know that it starts to kind of it removes that rom that that romance a wee bit. We know it's part of it. We know that it's part of it. But I think that it doesn't need to be the case. We can understand why that can be the issue with mass market product um, blends. We, we know that there's a place for it. Absolutely. But I don't. I don't want to pay 80, 90 pounds for a 16 year old single malt and have it artificially <laughs> um, loaded with color in order to make it more appealing to my naive little, oh, bless you, sensibilities, right? <laughs> it's just nice to kind of, sorry. Anyway, I hope more than anything, you just enjoyed the drums tonight. There's nothing on Absolutely. the table in front of you that you, there's clearly one of the five or the six, sorry. Um, that I don't get on with at all. And if anybody wants to come and take it off my hands, they can. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll trade. I'll trade. Um, Danny Hebbington is saying, uh, Roy, doesn't, doesn't it contradict the reason for using colour? When most casual whiskey buyers, uh, sorry, Danny, it just jumped. When most casual whiskey buyers don't know what they're buying anyway. Uh, absolutely. It really, it genuinely does. Um, I, I think that 
there's a lot to be said for educating people. But look at, if you go back 20 years and look at the craft beer section of your local co-op supermarket, you might have been able to find one or two. I go into my local co-op now and I can't find the mass market beers anymore. The cabinets are full of craft what, craft beers. Okay, they're more expensive, but people are drinking less. People are drinking much less than they ever have, but they're drinking better. Francis Cuthbert is... Francis, wow. So good to see you in, my friend. We all know who Francis Cuthbert is, right? Uh, most cheese is heavily coloured. Most people think cheddar should be orange. Yeah, absolutely. We buy Again, we buy with our eyes. Um, I love pale cheese. I love white cheese. I throw it on chilli and things, and it's meat's perfect. But if I make mac and cheese, I need it to be red Leicester orange, right? <laughs> but we can just add some tomato puree and to, to colour it up a wee bit, Francis. You're absolutely right with... Uh, uh, there's lots of it. So there he has given us a, an example of another food stuff where colour is added. Doc McCallan Fine and Rare saying it was not a good whiskey night for me. I haven't finished any of the six tonight. Hey, Doc's saturated. He's trying to hit 48 distilleries in two weeks. And he's only three or four days into his trip. <laughs> Oof. Jimmy Legg has bought us a dram to say, I've just gone from a Coquerin 12 to a Glen Turret 12. And the Glen Turret is just awful. I know it's not like that if I start out with it. That's why blind tastings are always just fun not anything that sways my opinion. I think that's a valuable lesson, right? And that's what I've been forcing on you tonight, not only to follow in a kind of random order where you don't know what order to drink it in, but to switch backwards and forwards. Yeah. And it does saturate yeah. your palate. It really, really, it genuinely does. Thanks for the drama. Thanks so much. Sandy McDonald is saying, hey, why the hell did, uh, did Jenny leave drink bank? <laughs> I'll bless you. <laughs> Uh, Sandy, um, uh, life uh, gets in the way and uh, I listen, she's still in the industry and she's willing to step up and, and, and hang out with us in my car. Yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy Legacy never put cheese on chilli well, if I don't have sour cream hanging about Jimmy, if I don't have anything else I'll happily put grated cheese on chilli it's one of my favourite things to do. Uh, I can't wait for Jimmy Legg and I to be in the same space and just disagree all night. It'll be great fun. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Bishop is saying, can you ask Graham Fraser how many distillery tours end with the sentence? And now here we add the caramel colour and strip out the oils. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, they don't. They tend not to go to the bottling hall, uh, Matt, in order to finish the tour. So that's they can probably have that as an excuse. Very few places uh, the bottle on site um, would be doing any kind of filtration. It tends to be at centralised bottling halls. And Jordi is saying the second a spirit is put in a barrel, it is chemically altered. I can understand that E158 seems less romantic, but in the end, it's all chemistry. Barrels and E158. I know. See, I don't. I don't agree, Jordi. I think that the barrel was that incidental thing that we used as storage that ended up being this, you know, serendipity that gave us this flavour, this colour, this wonderful thing. It's natural to then take a product that you and some people say, you know, it's sugar derived. It's natural, and no, the way that they produce that is is very contrived. It's very contrived. And Jimmy Legg is he's freaking out now that I've suggested I put sour cream on my chilli. <laughs> oh dear. Mark Slanger, Roy, the difference between with cheese is that by law they have to state food colouring. There we go, Mark. You have to state it. I've never read the cheese packet. Did you know that? Anyway, guys, you're take, would you still stick to your favourites tonight? Interestingly for, um, for Jenny, Jenny's favourite was the yellow. Mm -hmm. um, so just to remind everybody, you said it's your safe whiskey, Jenny. You picked it. It is my safe whiskey. It's the one I would say, like, if I'm in the bar or if somebody's buying me a whiskey and I don't know what's in the bar, I says, well, grab me a Klein Leash 14. And it's, and it's a good bottle. The, the sample I've given you is from a decent bottle of Klein Leash 14 mm -hmm. as well. So it's good. I was happy with ben, that. Ben, interestingly, picked the Glen Turret that, we, that, we've, that we've pulled out. I'm, I'm totally changing mine. I feel compelled to, given that. I haven't got a bottle of that, but I have got a bottle of the uh, the twelve year old Glen Turret, and I have got a bottle of the um, the uncolored Feta Can. So they're my new favourites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, I'm, I, it's opened my eyes for the the Feta Can. That was my sec. That was my favourite yesterday. Well, I tell you what, Jenny, I need to send you some of the warehouse too. I don't have much of it left because I love it so, but it's huh. oh, it's just tropical. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's oh. a rye cask. Uh, you know, Andy, right? It's just mm. a gorgeous whiskey. It's fantastic. And, and we were very slow to get because because of the legacy of Fetter Care. Nobody jumped out to buy that. And um, 
yeah, we were we were a wee bit slow with it, but it's turned out to be a wonderful whiskey. Steve A has been really helpful tonight, and he's taught he's added up the scores. So just to finish out, Andy's favourite tonight was um, the red. Interestingly, mm -hmm. I've only got a drip of this left, and you agreed with me, Andy. This was my favourite too. Um, I'm going to savour this wee drop left in this bottle. Yeah. I think this is a heavy fine leash. Yeah, I love it. Um, I, I think it's terrific. But uh, this has been open perhaps a long time. I've probably had this open about three years. Um, not making an excuse for it because it's in a glass tonight and I'm still loving it. It's still my favourite tonight. But Steve A uh, just added up the scores based on first place getting six points and the last place getting one. I didn't ask him to do that, Steve, so thank you very much, friend. But the winner tonight is the, the red and the yellow, which both are Klein Leash. Klein Leash come out on top over the course of tonight, which is super interesting to me. And, you know, let's not talk about Klein Leash anymore already getting to the point of unaffordability. Second place it was the orange, which interesting is that old version of the and, uh, Then it was pink, the feather care that I dislike, and green and blue came last. And green and blue, the, the ones that came last in terms of points to me, are whiskies that I am shooting about <laughs> from the roof. Absolutely love these, and they're both fully natural. Huh. Now I tell you what they don't what they are not is soft and palatable and easy. There, there's challenging flavour, texture, and there are things in it. Some people are talking about um okay, it was on the pink you talked about pickled onion Ben. But we're talking about these flavours that are, they're they're quite forceful. Mm -hmm. For me, that's got so much to do uh, with everything. I think it's a uh, anyway, Octopus. <laughs> I feel bad octopus and then, and then, <laughs> uh, well, 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 now that you know that you've got the old Glen Turret there and you've got the new Glen Turret as well, it'd be interesting to sit with it. And certainly I think it would be interesting to just consider the finish on that, that um, pink sample versus the green sample. The finish mm. is remarkably, remarkably different. Now here, there's a fella in tonight, a fella I respect. I love watching his content. I love watching his video. It's G Whiskey over in Taiwan. Uh, there's a lot of whiskies that we do not agree on. Um, but it's still very, very valuable to watch. And I think he's got an incredible way of assessing some whiskies. He's in tonight. Uh, good point you made a moment ago, Roy. He's bought me a wee dram. Uh, thanks very much, Jeff. There's something condescending about coloured whiskey. Still to assume people can't accept a lighter colour. Off to work, just popping in. Enjoy the lineup all. Thanks very much, Jeff. Thanks for the dram as well. He's uh, uh, probably about 12 hours ahead of us. I'm not sure, Taiwan, right? Uh, don't work too hard, Jeff. And thanks for dropping by. Thanks for the dram. Um, and he's and Stevie is saying, look, look, overall the, the the scores are pretty close. Twenty one to twenty eight points was the total spread. Really interesting. Yep. So that was that. That just uh, represents that mix that we saw tonight. Absolutely. So there's nothing. Um, hey, whiskey with Molly Ben's bought me a wee dram as well. Hey, thanks very much. Thanks Jeff. Hey, thanks hey, Ben. Whiskey with Molly. Cheers. No comment uh, from Ben. Guys, it's uh, we're uh, one hour, one and three quarters hours in. There is a quiz at the end. What's the timing? It's uh, half past 11. You up for it? Yeah, go on. I can't what, if I to what if I told you that it's dead easy tonight? Then I'd know you were lying, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it ever easy? I, I think it's a wee bit easier tonight. I think it's a wee bit easier tonight. I've been trying to lift off on the gas pedal, and I've been, um, I'm thinking that maybe next week if Menno or something can step forward for St. Patrick's and do a quiz. Um, now, you're, you're not Irish, Jenny, but I know you spent a lot of time in Ireland and enough time to pick up a wee bit of the accent there. Yeah, um, sure. But I, I, I need to, I realise the V-Pub is falling on the 17th next week. I'm Often, doing a tasting in my hometown in Sweden on the 17th of March. So a week from today, I'll be in the place I was born doing a tasting for 60 weeks. Oh, that's, a, that's wonderful. All that's exciting. going to be there. My babysitter. Ever, it's going to be so surreal. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guarantee you, the professionalism will drop because you can't be that person in front of your pals, right? You just I can't. know everything about me. <laughs> well, that's not... That's not Jenny. Why is she speaking like that? Why is she acting like that? That's not Jenny. And you know, you have to let it absolutely. But that's quite amazing in itself. It's not yeah. Irish whiskey you're doing. It'll be Ardemarkin, is it? It will be Ardemarkin, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. They're in for a treat. Fantastic. But Hell's we'll celebrating. Crack crack. <laughs> Sorry. Hell's celebrating uh, 24 months as a barfly. Thanks again for sending our sets of drums, Roy Slancha. Helen, you're very, very welcome. Uh, don't worry. I'll get, I'll get the favour back out of you in blood, as you well know. <laughs> I'm asking Helen to do me a wee favour on the, is it a space thing? Sugar Kitty saying, if you really want to squash spirits, get Shayla for a quiz. 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's been a while since we've had Sheila. We need to reach out and get her back again. And uh, Ben is saying, surely you have to ask me, the Irishman, to do the quiz next week. Oh, Ben, be careful what you wish for, my friend. If you're up for that, go ahead. Make it a community night. Absolutely. That would be great fun. I'll reach out to uh, all the folk that I know, all the folk that are uh, over there on Ireland and see who can join us to have a wee bit of a St. Patrick's knees up next week. I think that would be worthwhile. Often I let St. Patrick's just slide by. There's so much activity, there's so much goes on around it that I've only dedicated only one or two V pubs over the years. But when it lands on the 17th, I cannot, I cannot let it slide. We have to celebrate it. Anyway, the quiz is here for everybody. Thanks for everybody who wants to hang out and stay till the end. We know you know the drill on this thing. It's always multiple choice. I genuinely think it's a wee bit easier tonight, but it's never an easy quiz, as Jenny said. Um, but good luck, everybody. Multiple choice. Even the monkeys have a chance of getting one in three. Oh, sorry, a 33% chance of getting each one right. Um, you're all playing against yourself. Only share the scores if you want to. Uh, it's all just for a wee bit of fun, and hopefully you maybe pick up a wee nugget of useful information. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for being brave once again, for stepping up and sharing your thoughts on it. Um, it's always nice. Whiskey is good at teaching us humility, I think. Roland Whiskey Radar has seen, so tonight I suppose you will use coloured text boxes on the quiz slides. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you might see a wee difference in the quiz tonight, but not on many things. Good luck, everybody. Question one. If you found the phrase mit Farbstoff written on your whiskey, what would that tell you? Now, apologies for my pronunciation to any German ears in the chat tonight. Mit Farbstoff. What would that tell you? Would it tell you? A, the E150A has been added. B, caramel has been added. Or C, colorant has been added. <laughs> I, I thought you were being honest with the it's easier this week and then yeah. there's that came up <laughs> uh, The Milkman's Kid is in that's a brilliant name, The Milkman's Kid German he's saying, Malt Brother Ray, German <laughs> um, and Pete Ed is saying it might be German pronunciation just perfect said uh, Philip, Va well it won't be Philip Wagner then will it, it be Philip Wagner thanks Philip, thanks my friend uh, the, the answers are actually all over the place uh, Anthony Lambert is saying well pronounced C, it's the law in Germany. What do you guys think? What would you pick? A, even 50B caramel or C, colorant? Oh, I've got a tiny C. Sorry, I'm just realized. You all think colorant. You're absolutely spot on, but the truth is that absolutely all of these are, are spot on as well. They're all <laughs> correct. I but the, the literal translation of mit Farstoff actually literally refers to a colorant. It doesn't specify caramel or spit caramel, and it doesn't specify E150A, but they're all absolutely right. So everybody that's in tonight is on 100% after question one. I told you it would be easy. Question two, which of these is not a name for one of the infamous black whiskies? Now, this is if you talk about cynical use of caramel colouring. <laughs> these whiskies may or may not have employed such a practice. Mm. The infamous black whiskies. I'm looking for a name that is not real. Two of these are real black whiskies. A, Ski and Do. B, Ben Do. Or C, Kudu. Ski and Do, Ben Do, or Kudu. Which of them is not a black whiskey? Now, I know of three black whiskies. There is another one that isn't listed there. But this was a whiskey, usually it was fairly young. Sometimes uh, it was a 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, and they talked about uh, all these fancy casks and things in order to give the whiskey this color when it was nonsense. It was actually just deeply, heavily loaded with E150A. Go ahead, guys. What do you think the answer is? Ski and do for Ben. Ski and do for Andy. I am so full. Sorry. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, well, I think just... I've had too much whiskey tonight. I might just write it on a different piece. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, what's the letter, Jenny? C. You think kudu. Ski and do. Now, we just need to suggest, we need, need to be, Jenny's actually a Swede. 
and she learned English in Ireland. She's living in Scotland now. I hope she's happy here. But a skein do is actually do is is black. Um, it's Gaelic for black. Uh, do dove, depending you on go. how you pronounce it. It's actually my surname <laughs> is is Gaelic for black. Um, skein do is. Uh, it's not a black knife, it's hidden knife. So sinister, black, hidden, shadow, all that kind of thing. Ski and do is a knife, the one that you would wear in your sock if you were in of traditional course, Highland yes. Oh, I didn't even look at that. I, I know yeah. what ski and do is. A ski and oh, do, look. yes. Have a look at these whiskeys, though. Uh -huh. yeah, the one that was missing was the 10-year-old oh, Loch yeah. Do. Black whiskey. Uh, a uh, coup is, I think, dog. So Kuboken is obviously um, the uh, the mm -hmm. tomato and peated whiskey. It talks yeah. about the, the mystical Ghost dog. dog. And Bendu is obviously Black Mountain. Uh, Loch Du is obviously Black Loch. But uh, these are the kind of cynical whiskies. Um, if you want to taste what emulsified whiskey tastes like, uh, you can still pick up a Bendu. Uh, if you want to pick up a Loch Du, that one there is on the whiskey exchange now for 350 quid. Wow. And it's only there as a kind of legendary curiosity. It's really how that can be 350 yeah. pounds worth of whiskey is crazy. Jimmy Legacy and Roy Black is a cool name. Well, Roy, well, Roy is Galahad as well, so Red Black, there you go. Question three, which spirit for the first time becomes legally whiskey this month? Somebody's celebrating having legal whiskey for the first time. Is it A, the guys over at Lag? B, the guys in Harris? Or C, the guys in Glasgow at Clydeside? Who is celebrating legal whiskey in March of 2022? I haven't heard this from them directly. This is from the Malt Whiskey Yearbook, um, which I believe to be mostly accurate. Except it did say that Aaron was founded in 1993, I noticed, and I'm pretty sure Aaron was 1995. Ben Demon Hunter, it's good to see you, my friend. You're not working tonight, I hope. Opened my first tomato in Kuboken last night. Such a lovely dram. Glad you're enjoying it. We've got some ex interesting experimental ones too. What do you think, guys? What is your answers? Lag, Harris, or Clydeside. Lag, says Ben. Uh, Andy is saying Harris. And Jenny is saying Lag. Two out of three. Absolutely Lag in March of 2022. Becomes three years old. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any spirit out of them yet. We need to wait a wee bit longer. And uh, Mark Slinger is saying, Roy, have you tried Delmonic? Yes, I've tried Delmonic, Mark. Uh, nothing to report home yet. Still very young whiskey. Um, and I've got one there that's actually unopened. I've got a Lady of the Glen Delmonic that I've yet to try to Four, the restless Peter Mackey famously built Malt Mill, which was a new distillery on the site of Lagavulin. But what year? A, 1825. B, 1908. C, 1962. Now, come on, look at the, look at the spread. I mean, we're, we're in the outward half here. It's zero to five on the questions. It should be easier. So even though this is a tricky question, Hopefully it's easier for you. Famously, uh, Lagavulin lost the license to distribute Lefroy, so Peter Mackey, being the type of character that he was, decided that he was going to make his own Lefroy. And that's how Malt Mill came around. And it lasted for quite a long time. Uh, it's not known to exist out there as a single malt anywhere. If you do have some Malt Mill on, malt mill on hand, uh, you can retire right now. <laughs> <laughs> What do we think, guys? 1825, 1908, and 1962. Ben thinks it's 1908. Andy thinks it's 1908. And Jenny is still trying to get her head around. <laughs> that B, she also thinks it's 1908. And absolutely uh, everybody in the lounge as well seems to agree that it is indeed 1908. Malt Mill, the, the uh, plot of the story of the movie Angel's Share uh, revolves around Malt Mill, a decent movie, a really good movie. Question five is always a picture, so we're looking at a distillery clearly here. Uh, Jenny, you're at a slight advantage for this one. Are we looking at A, Rosebank, B, Arna Murkin, or C, Falkirk? And Scotty is saying, yeah, but malt mill is probably still cheaper than petrol. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good man, Scotty, superb. <laughs> and the milkman's kid is saying he read this yesterday, so he's getting a point out of this one as well. You guys feeling confident about this? I'm not sure. I think Jenny's in good shape with this one because uh, 
yeah, helps a wee bit. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I followed him on social now, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm still not 100, but I think. Okay, go ahead. Is it Rosebank, Ardemarkin, or Falkirk? Falkirk. Uh, B, Andy thinks it's Ardemarkin. And uh, C, Falkirk. Sorry, I'm saying C. C, yes, yeah. Uh, Jenny, C from now on, just shout it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am going to do it. I wonder if I led Andy there by suggesting that Jenny had a, a chance. Now, obviously, oh, by right. a process elimination she had. Now, Andy, you're absolutely right. Ardenworkin is very similar in architectural style to this, the whitewashed, uh, rendered yeah. uh, brickwork. They only have a single pagoda, though. Um, and uh, aye, this is Falkirk. It's taken a hell of a long time to come around Falkirk. But you can see um, they're looking pretty healthy there. Going to be interesting to see what happens there in the future. Question six. One for the road, prophecy, and elements are all releases from which distillery? A. Aaron, B. Talisker, or C. Jura. <laughs> One for the road, <laughs> prophecy, and elements. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey with Molly saying, I have lost all sound. Oh, Ben, um, that's, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. I hope it's just you. We can hear each other, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, guys, when you're ready, what do you think? One for the road, prophecy and elements. Ben thinks Jura. Andy thinks Jura. Just shout it out, Jen. We can't, we can't see. See, she Jura. thinks Jura too. Fantastic. Spot on. Well done, everybody. I think Prophecy was maybe the one that gave it away there. Yeah. I'd never heard of One for the Road. Eh, but apparently, yes, it's a Jura release. Loud and clear here, says Helen. Good. Are you sure it's One for the Road and not just The Road? Eh, uh, there might have been another a release called The Road, eh, Frank, uh, but I believe that they have a release called One for the Road. Quite happy to be corrected. And remember, if I make a mistake on the quiz at the end, Everybody gets a free point. They can just take it and run. Question seven. Which distillery made a statement this week in response to claims they were operating with Russian investment? Controversy. I feel it for them. This is this is quite a horrific scenario here because this is the Scottish government business gateway. Introduced them to these investors. There's no real direct ties here. Turned out that they are uh, embedded in, in Russia, but they're not oligarchs and they're not on any sanctions list. Um, but the distillery had to come out and 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 uh, be open, fair play to them, that they were very open and talked about the measures that they were taking. Uh, the Russian investors are resigning as non-executive directors and they're now in active negotiations in, all, in order to transfer the shares. Brutal scenario that we find ourselves in. It's, yeah. it's sickening and ridiculous. A, Kingsburns, B, Lindor's Abbey, C, Holyrood. If anybody starts boycotting whiskey because of Russian investments and things, you we really need to. Uh, this is this is separating the spaghetti from the sauce here. It's going to take a long time, and everything that you touch, you need to start thinking about because it's more than just a little distillery on the east coast of Scotland. Uh, the flack that they've taken in the past few days because of this is not fair. No, I feel for them. Yeah. A, Kings Barnes, B, Lindor's Abbey, C, Holyrood. Lindor's. Absolutely, Jenny. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindor's Abbey. They came out and made a statement on their Facebook page. You can go along and read it there. Very open, full disclosure. Um, Lindor's Abbey. I wish them the very best of luck and hope that you can get things sorted very, very quickly because I know uh, that it's got nothing to do with anything that's happening uh, because of uh, maniacs. <laughs> Question eight, from where does Talisker source its peated malt? Okay, I think the last eight, nine, ten, the run home is going to be a wee bit more tricky. So I'm asking everybody where Talisker gets its peated malt, but malt brother Ray, Philip Wagner, Whiskey Radar Roland are all on full marks so far. Fantastic stuff, guys. Talisker gets its peated malt from either A, Port Ellen Maltings on Isla, B, Glenord Maltings in the Highlands, or C, Resile Maltings in Speyside. Where would Tasker source its peated malt? Malt Brother Ray is shouting for Ellen. 
Um, Steve Atkiss thinks it's Glen Ord, B. Oh God, I don't know. Can I can I tell you <laughs> that I only discovered this today when I made this quiz? Oh, I didn't know this was the case. And Tony Nelson is suggesting malt mill. <laughs> hey. I've got a horrible feeling this is going to be a curveball. Well, yeah, there isn't no. a banana skin emoji. If there was a curveball here, I would usually have a banana skin here, and it's not here. So just go with what you think. What do you think, guys? Port Ellen, Glen Ord, or Rosile? B, I, Glen Ord. I B, B. Glen Ord. Oh, I put B, because, yeah. Three Bs? Mm -hmm. Spot on. Absolutely, Glen Ord. Yes. Rosile does have a maltings. Uh, and, of course, Port Ellen uh, supplies not just the Azure distilleries on Isla, but other distilleries too. Um, but actually, Talisker sources is peated malt from Glen Ord. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Glen Ord is capable of producing all the malt that's required for Glen Ord and a, uh, another 100% more on top of that as well. <clears throat> Nine, which of these distilleries does not have an associated independent bottling interest? So uh, imagine Ben Romack here that are associated with Gordon and McPhail. Um, that's, uh, or Ardna Murkin that's associated with Adelphi, of course, yes. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm pulling at here. <laughs> A, the Borders, B, Toravec, or C, Strathern. We're looking for a distillery that does not have an association with an independent bottler. The Borders, and the Borders, <laughs> Toravec on Sky, or Strathern, and the East Coast in Fife. Oh, no, it's not, actually. It's in the Strathern's the Southern Highlands, isn't it? I want to have my... Yes, yeah, Strathern is counted as the Southern Highlands, I think. Do you feel confident? You know this? I think I know it's not B, but I don't want to be sure and commit to that. <laughs> okay, when you're ready, guys. <clears throat> um, I'm guessing B. B, Toravec. Uh a, yeah, the Borders a. for Andy and I Jenny. I A. The Borders. Uh, you're right, Jenny and Andy. Oh. You're absolutely right. Uh, Toravec is Mossburn Distillers and Strathairn is obviously a much more recent thing. It's uh, Douglas Lane. So the Borders uh, is the... I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's not just Borders Distilling Company. It's called something else. I can't remember. Uh, but yes, they don't have a direct... Uh, it's a pretty cool building. It's a, it's a nice visit. Yes, I'm down uh, in October last year, bumped into Vicky Pascal while I was there. She was doing some promotional work. Um, and uh, I met the distillery manager and things. I would love to go back and have a look. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. They're going to hang on to their product for a wee while longer, mm -hmm. I think. Finally, we do have an asshat. Of course we do. It's the V-Pub. It's the last question. Uh, we still have a, a bit of an asshat at, at the end. I hope that's okay. I'm trying to remember just how bad it was. Let's just have a look. <laughs> oh, it's quite bad. Uh, how many whiskies are offered for sale on the Highland Park online store? So famously, you know, there's a fair old selection of uh, Highland Park. It's really difficult to keep up. But I'm asking, how many are offered for sale on the Highland Park online store? Slightly less than the number of A, <laughs> as you operating malt distilleries, B, malt distilleries in Speyside, or C, distilleries listed as new in the 2022 Malt Whiskey Year book. <laughs> I need wow. to see. The Milkman's Kid is claiming 10. Okay, uh, good luck. Um, I'm sure you're not there yet. Um, or maybe he's not claiming 10 out of 10. Maybe he's uh, claiming. Jerry Miller's on a 9 out of 9, as is Steve Atkiss. So this is important for them. Bud Jenkins on seven, Haleswood on six, Danny Heavington on uh, six, Malt Brother Ray's doing well on an eight, looking for an eight, Francis Cuthbert on a nine out of nine, Francis, killing it. Uh, so Francis is proving that he knows a hell of a lot more than just his daft mill. That looks to be the, the nine out of nines for tonight. This could trip folk up. So what I'm asking here is, if you were onto the the Highland Park official online store, you could be offered, you know, and I'm not just talking about the 12-year-old that's going to be in different size bottles and things, so however many size bottles it's in, how many 
uh, whiskies are available? Is it slightly less than the Diageo operating malt distilleries? I can tell you that's 28. Is it B, malt distilleries in Speyside, somewhere in the order of 49, I think? C, distilleries listed as new in the 2022 malt whiskey yearbook, which would be somewhere in the order of 34. Give me your answers, please. Commit. I know that you're throwing a dart. I know it's a guess for this one. Sir Asat. C for Jenny. I'm back to yeah. me, but I know. A, the as you operate malt distilleries. And B, okay. I changed my mind. <laughs> We're it all over the place. We're all over the place. It wouldn't be an asset if it made sense to me. So I'll go with it. Go with B. I have to tell you that uh, Highland Park currently have 24 whiskies available to buy on their site, which is just slightly less than Diageo. Uh, no. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Listen, there were some easy ones in there tonight. I'll come back to you guys and you, where you can figure out as you share what you scored tonight. Um, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo says molasses. He's absolutely spot on. Whiskey with Molly Ben is celebrating a 7 out of 10. Well done to you, Ben. I think that's a good thing. 8 out of 10 for Tony Nelson. Boom. 7 out of 10 for Sugar Kitty and Captain Bamis. Fantastic. Whiskey Radar Roland got a 9. Mark Slinger and Stewie Baby both on a 9. Jerry Miller has got his emojis out. 10 out of 10. Jerry Miller, well done. 10 out of 10. Fantastic, buddy. Well done. Jimmy Legg, super guest tonight, as always. Love the V-Pub. Bought my wee dram as well. Jimmy, thank you so much. I agree. Uh, I love having these guys on. They're quite uh, nice to... Um, enjoy a drum with in real life. Hello, I can't, I haven't done that with uh, Andy yet. We need to solve that soon, Andy. You need to get we yourself do, in, um, maybe for the Glasgow Whiskey Festival, but that would mean waiting until November, maybe even something sooner. Absolutely. Just come up and hang out here with me. Um, nine out of ten for Sid Martin, Steve Atkiss. Oh, sorry, Steve, close. Nine out of ten, slipped at the ass hat, caught you out, buddy. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Thank you for your drum, my friend. Cheers. So it looks to me like it's uh, Jerry Miller's night tonight. Well, how did you guys score? How did you get on? Eight out I of ten. I got eight out of ten. I'm delighted. Yeah. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Oh, wow. wow. Fantastic. <laughs> what a performance. And I have to say that despite you not agreeing with my preferences, which is one of the takeaways tonight, that it was a great performance on the tasting tonight as well, especially being able to hone in and demonstrate, in fact, that despite you being able to select the majority of the coloured whiskies, it didn't necessarily affect how you rated them. But the takeaway from tonight, if you could choose, despite your humility, despite your pragmatism, despite your <laughs> rationale and your realistic perspective, what would you choose? Be honest. If you're going to pay £40 plus for whisky, let it be natural. Come on. Right? All day long. All day long. I think one of the reasons that Adam Mark and Jenny is being shouted about from the rooftops for relatively young whiskey, what is the oldest cast? 2015, right? Maybe some from 2014, I'm not sure. Yeah, 2014. Sorry, I had a bit of coughing fit there. Yeah, 2014. That's, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, still, it's getting, wow, it's closing in on eight years old now. Yeah, it's scary. This year, we're eight. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. But it is. it's so densely flavoured. It's so full of flavour. I, I think yeah. if you filter that thing. <laughs> We've got a really cool whiskey coming out soon, which you announced on your, um, on your drum face website. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so excited about it. It's just. This is the I'm, I'm a in Sweden. I've tried it. I've tried it at the whiskey festival, Jenny. You're, oh, yeah. you're onto a great thing. I thought it was, I thought it was wonderful. Um, great. I, I, it's. I. I'm not sure I would be recommending it to the same people that are really loving their forty to forty three percent mass market whiskies. Yeah. Absolutely, it would need a lot of hand holding, but it's so fl it's so flavoursome. Yeah, um, um, I'm excited about taking it to Sweden because I know roughly their profile, and I think it's going to work really well there. What ABV is it coming out at? Oh, 59.2. 59.2. Mm -hmm. So it just sneaks under that 60% ABV limit for Scandinavia. I think it's just Norway that has that or Sweden too. Norway. Uh, yeah, not Sweden. Just Norway. Norway has that rule. Uh, Jerry Miller has bought my wee drama and he's saying, uh, good scores are all about the teacher. Thanks, Roy. Okay. Uh, well, I think we're talking about Ben then tonight. 
But Jerry, thanks very much for your virtual <laughs> dram. Hell's witnessing fabulous Veep this evening, super guests, and a grand selection of drams who's lunch you Helen. I'm really glad you enjoyed them. Uh, when it's uh, when's it out? Uh, Helen is asking when's it out. Every time I ask you that, Jenny, you're just like soon. <laughs> so look, we're meant to be getting labels tomorrow. I, I was going to say today, but now it's midnight, so the labels are meant to arrive today. I mean, it's bottled. We just need to label it up and get it out there. So Probably. it's labels that's been next holding one. it up. That's it's amazing one. how many times I hear that labels are holding <laughs> releases up. It's crazy. We're ready. We're ready to have it out there. So just keep an eye on our social, really. There you go, Helen. Keep an eye on the socials, but it should be imminent. Um, it's quite an outturn as well. Is it thirteen or fifteen thousand? Thirteen, one three, yeah. Thirteen thousand. So it's not going to be everywhere. You might have to be a bit of a ninja to get it, but yeah, hopefully that's know. a big enough uh, outturn for us to get our hands on it. Jed Smith, say, oh sorry, Graham Fraser saying that was an interesting session tonight. Thanks, Roy, and guests, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, Erwin is Erwin Laranaga saying, has Jenny been with Adam Orkin since the beginning? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Well, I well no, um, I started a year and a half ago. I started in twenty twenty. But you're already so much part of it. I can't imagine that. <laughs> right? It's in my blood. <laughs> yeah. Jed is saying, right, another awesome night. Thanks, Jed. You're back on the very, very good, my friend. Jeff Whiskey saying, brilliant evening in colour. impressed. <laughs> Fantastic, Jeff. Good to see you, buddy. Todd Fraser is saying, excited for the new cast strength. Arna, Chris Paul, like saying, great guests, great VPUB. See you next Thursday. Uh, listen, I've really enjoyed it. See, when I have guests that step up, even when they know, oh, Roy's asking for us and to appear on another VPUB, it's going to be blind drams and things. You're, you're happy just to step up. If anybody doesn't know Andy at Maltbox, his YouTube channel, he's bringing out fantastic reviews, really pragmatic, down-to-earth opinions on whiskey every week. He's a staple for me. I watch it all the time. Ben at Whiskey Geek, he doesn't, he's proved himself time and time again as well. His channel on YouTube is Whiskey Geek. You must go along and see how this guy uh, appraises his whiskey, how he documents it, how analytical, how on the spectrum he is. And it's wonderful to witness Ben, well done again tonight. When you said, I think this is Klein Leash 14, my poker face was actually stretched to its, at its limit. And yet again, <laughs> you just show us, uh, you know, your way around a glass of whiskey. You're not an expert, buddy. You're a very, very valued enthusiast. Jenny, thank you so much for stepping up. I know that people could consider that I'm inviting somebody on from the industry and things, and but I know you. I know how much you like whiskey. I know how much you're just wrapped up in it. And look at your shelf behind you. That's not all Ardna Merkins, right? You've got Coquerins up there. You've got, I don't know if that's a Dronach there, but you've got a Benriac there. You've got. Yeah. It's Benriac, Glendronach, Kilcaran. It's my babies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your babies. Yeah. 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 Delphi and then Ardna Merkin. Yeah. I don't have any just... Wings bottles there, but I do have some in the attic. I need to bring them down. You're just that's as whiskey for a mess. Sorry. <laughs> my CV. <laughs> Your CV. Ah, of course it is. Yeah. Springbank, Brown yeah. Foreman, yeah. Arna Murkin, Adelphi. Of course it is. It's your CV. And the only thing that's missing quite rightly is Weems. Yeah. yeah. Um, Weems are doing well as uh, too. They're bringing out some more, more and some of the blended malts are really interesting too. Great stuff. Um, I, as I was just about to say, you're just as whiskey promiscuous as the rest of us. Sugar Kitty is dropping in links to the other channels there. Thank you so much. Check out Maltbox. Uh, Sugar Kitty, I really appreciate that. If you could, um, Arden Murkin, nobody needs, you know how to follow Arden Murkin on all the socials. Philip Wagner has bought us a dram to say Superb VPUB with lovely guests. I raised my first post COVID dram. Oh, I will raise a dram to that too, Philip, tonight to all of you. Stay well and see you soon. Mm -hmm. Slancha. Uh, yeah, literally, Philip Slancha, good health to you, buddy. I'm glad you're on the recovery. Cheers. Our, Fred, our friend Jed Smith is suffering tonight, but and so many of us are. I heard recently that there's one in 17 in Scotland currently positive with COVID. It's mm. absolutely terrifying. Anyway, there's bigger problems going on in the world right now, as we all are aware of. Guys, thank you all so much. Let me raise this wee very, very cloudy whiskey. Can you see it? It's really cloudy. It's very cloudy whiskey that we can celebrate all the more. I know this is Klein Leash. I've just taken a sip from it. Let's have a wee look. It's red. <laughs> That is the Klein Leash too. Um, and, and I want to say thank you so much for trusting me. Thank you for stepping up and doing this. Um, I know that I'll have to figure out a way to pay you in the future, but I'll find out a way to do that. Uh, thanks, Ben. Thanks for proving uh, how much you know your way around the glass. Thanks, Jenny, for being so open and so candid with us all. 
And Andy, always a pleasure, even at such ridiculously short notice, my friend. Thank you, buddy. We Great will we will ha share a dram in the, in the same space together soon. Don't disappear if you don't have to, and I'll raise a glass with you after the credits roll. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Jenny. And thanks, Thank Ben. You, well done, buddy. Well done. So there we go. I did promise that we wouldn't be able to conclude anything tonight. There was nothing scientific about it. But if we do demand as enthusiasts natural colour, and if we do demand a non chill filtration and things, we need to understand that if we were sat down and two glasses were put in front of us, the chances of us picking out which one, if it was the same whiskey, I think we genuinely would. But over the course of our whiskey journeys, we know that we're drawn to the things with more densely flavoured, the better texture, the better grip, the better mouthfeel, the longer finish. And we know that we associate that with the things that tend to be handled better, the things that's treated, treat, that, that are treated a wee bit more naturally, the things that aren't concocted or contrived or engineered, that kind of almost synthetic forced feeling that we can sometimes get from certain whiskies. And over the course of our whiskey career, or, or our whiskey journey, let's say, we get to recognise that, we know what it is. But the takeaway from tonight is more than anything, it's disingenuous. Genuinely, I think even for a budget whiskey to be coloured is not acceptable in these days. It's just not. We know that it's legacy. We know that there are reasons for it, but it's still difficult for me to accept. Chill filtration, okay. There's maybe more of an argument for that. I understand the cosmetic side, the, the clouding and things. Age statements, I'm okay with. And bottling strength, uh, bottling strength goes hand in hand uh, with the chill filtration thing. I hope that we're moving. If you're going to charge people premium prices from a premium product, you're going to give them a natural product too. Anyway, thanks to everybody for hanging out with me in another uh, VPUB. Uh, I think the only thing we demonstrated tonight is that my opinion, uh, uh, most people disagreed with my favourites tonight, that's for sure. But that's okay. I hope you're enjoying your whiskey wherever you are and I hope that we can hang out for a St. Patrick's Day celebration next week. And until then, I'll raise this glass and tell you all that you're very dearly loved. Thank you for hanging out with me for another VPUB tonight and I look forward to seeing you next week. Daniel Williams just bought me a wee dram at the dying moments. Cheers to you, Daniel. Cheers to everyone. Thank you. <laughs>